You're watching BCTV. We're all about Brantford. You're watching BCTV, Brantford Government Television, a service of Brantford Community Television. This program is brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. meeting of the Brantford Planning Zoning Commission to order. It is Thursday, June 20th, 2024. I have about 7.05 p.m. And uh, I'll introduce members of the commission and staff. Uh, commission member Joe Vaiuzo. Joe, are you here? Joe's here. Thanks, Joe. Massimo Liguri. Massimo, are you here? Massimo, looks like you're muted. You should be able to, uh, I've made you a co-host. You should be able to unmute yourself, but I'll. Okay, I'm having, uh, I'm here, Massimo Liguri, but uh, for some reason I can't mute. No, I, I, yeah, I think I just fixed that. Sorry about that. Okay, should thanks. Be able to. Thanks, thanks, Massimo. Commission member Sharon Hutner. Sharon, are you here? Sharon Hutner is here. And uh, we have uh, a number of commission members absent, uh, Joe Chadwick, Fred Russo, Marcy Pelosi. That said, we still have four members. We need three, four quorums so we can go. Um, our staff this evening is our town planner, Harry Smith. Harry, are you here? I am here. Our assistant planner, Evan Brining. Evan, are you here? Here. And our clerk, recording secretary, Michelle Martin, is lurking in the cloud. And I am Chuck Anders, chair. We'll follow a normal format for public hearings, which is the applicant will go first, make its presentation, screen share, and so forth. If you need some tech help, we'll just bug Evan for that. After the applicant gets done, we open it up uh, for public comment. We'll ask that you state your name and address for the record, and I'll ask Evan when we're done with this to review the process for participating in the public hearing. After the public finishes, we would allow the applicant to respond to any matters of the public uh, that were raised during the public hearing. And we also turn it over to uh, any further questions from commission members or staff. And we may or may not close the hearing depending on how it goes. So it's not unusual to keep a public hearing open through multiple meetings. And uh, with that, uh, with our secretary absent, uh, Harry, I don't know, can you read the notice of public hearing? Um, I can, and I was going to print it out, which I have not done, but let me just pull it up on the screen. Um, give me a second. Okay, um, legal notice, Town of Brantford, uh, the Planning and the Zoning Commission of the Town of Brantford, Connecticut, hereby gives notice of public hearings to be held on Thursday, June 20th, 2024 at 7 p.m. by remote technology to consider the applications listed below. Information regarding how to participate in the public hearings will be provided on the commission's uh, meeting agenda. It'll be posted on the town's website at least 24 hours prior to the meeting. Number one, application 24-5.2, special exception for auto body repair located at 23 North Main Street, 23 North Main LLC, care of Dan Iamuno, applicant and owner. Number two, application 24-5.3, uh, zoning regulation amendment to modify sections 2.2, 3.3, and 7.6, where family and group child care homes conform to Public Act 23-142. Planning and Zoning Commission applicant. Number three, application 24-5.8, uh, special exception for an oversized accessory structure located at 22 Beachwood Road, Sean Jeffrey, applicant and owner. That said, hearings, all persons will have the right to be heard. Copies are on file in the Planning and Zoning Commission's office. 
at the Planning Zoning Department, 1019 Main Street, Brantford, Connecticut, 06405. Written communications may be sent to the above address or to planning and zoning at brantford-ct.gov. All right, check in there. Thank you, Harry. Evan, can you just, uh, we're gonna begin our public hearings, but Evan, can you review the process for the public to participate in public hearings? Uh, sure, if your computer has a microphone, uh, you can select down at the bottom of your screen, the raise hand button when prompted. Uh, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, um, you can also type into the chat that you'd like to participate or wave your hand in front of the camera and I'll try to catch you. Um, if you're dialing in by phone, you can press star nine. Um, and we ask that everyone please uh, state their name at the beginning of their comment or question. Chuck Andrews here. Thank you, Evan. With that, we'll move on to our agenda. The first item on our agenda is uh, Sue and Stephen Lundy, 32 Wood Road, Special Exception in Cam. Uh, this is an applic. Uh, this is listed under a public hearing item, but I believe we actually closed that matter as a public hearing at our last meeting. So we're going to uh, defer on that one and we'll just transfer this to under our old business and we can discuss that uh, as a possible vote. So if you're here on that one, uh, we'll we'll just move on that. That'll be probably in a way it would be after we complete all our public hearings and uh, we'll, we'll add it to the end of our old business. So it may be a bit, uh, Miss Miles, I think if you're listening, I think that's your one. So with that, we'll go on to item number two and three and four. And these are four three Elms LLC applicant owner. This is a property at four three Elms Road, a special exception modification, coastal site plan, multifamily residential, uh, special exception for oversized accessory structure garage, although that application has been withdrawn. And then the last item is a special exception modification for grading under 6.8 of the regulations. This is a, one that I believe we had opened our public hearing uh, in May. And uh, so we'll uh, continue that one. Is Apkin ready to proceed? Yes, good evening, Chair. Oh. For the record, I'm here. <laughs> so for the record, my name is Megan Miles. I am a land use attorney with Carmody Torrance, Sandag and Hennessy. My office is at 195 Church Street in New Haven. And my firm represents the applicant, which is 43 Elms LLC. I will say that a couple of our team members are juggling hearings and we just sent them messages to jump on, but I was planning on doing the presentation, but there might be a couple of folks who from our team who are jumping on the line now. But to introduce everyone, um, on behalf of the applicant is Kurt Wittick. See, I don't know if Joe made it, but we have Kurt Wittick. Our engineer is Tony Bolduck, and it looks like he's here. He was one of the ones jumping over, so he made it. Our architect is Russ Campaign of CK Architects, and then Sue Fields is our landscape designer. So I know Sue's jumping on as well. So um, at the hearing, at our last hearing, we made our full presentation on the project, and we continued the hearing for additional time to address some outstanding comments that staff had, and we also used it as an opportunity to address some comments that we received from the public during public hearing. So we have submitted revised plans in response to all comments. So tonight, I anticipated just running through the revisions myself. I am sensitive to the fact that you have an extremely long agenda tonight, but uh, Please don't hesitate to interrupt if you have any further questions. And as I just mentioned, the full team is on the line to provide details um, for anything you want further information on. So if I could share my screen. All right, it looks like I have sharing. Do, 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 do. All right, can everyone see my screen now? Yes, we can. Great. So I do not have any additional exhibit materials this evening. All I anticipate going through is the revised plan set that we submitted. So this is the revised site plan, but generally to go over, I have one, two, three, four, five overarching revisions that are of note for the commission. First um, and foremost is actually that we did end up reducing the height of the garages to bring them below 15 feet negating the need for the special exception request. Our initial filing had proposed a garage height of approximately 16.7 feet. Essentially, that was to reflect more accurately the garage that had always been, the garages and their height that had always been anticipated for this development that had been approved back in 2022. Additional details this time around on grading indicated that a more accurate measurement was actually 16.7 feet. 
Having gone through the hearing, received feedback from the public, the team revisited the plans and reduced the pitch of the roof heights of the garages, reducing the height below 15 feet. So now they're compliant height. And I did submit correspondence withdrawing that special exception request. So as reviewed, now the only outstanding except special exceptions relate to the four units for multifamily use on the site and then the, the grading and fill as well. So that was the first major revision. So you can see the new pitches here. Uh, the second revision of note was at our last hearing, um, Harry Smith, town planner, had requested that we provide some turning Brady detail, re details related to the parking lot on the western side of the property. So over here, uh, Tony did run those details there. They've been up on the plans now in the upper right-hand corner on sheet two here. And the result of that analysis was actually we were able to reduce uh, the, well, the length of this um, backing up area here by another two and a half feet. So that brought the, another two and a half feet farther away from the wall and the coastal resources. So that was a, a benefit from doing that study is we were able to reduce that area further. So that is now reflected here on the, uh, the Western surface parking area. So the third major revision relates to landscaping on the Eastern property line. Let's see if I can zoom out here. There we go. Okay. So after our, um, let me go to the landscaping plan here. So we had received a staff comment in the staff report uh, indicating that historically, and I knew this, there had been a tree on the Eastern neighbor's property that a prior owner had cut down and plans approved going forward for years had indicated that the tree was to be replaced in connection with this development, which has never been a problem for my clients as well. Uh, so that comment, staff still had that comment, put that back on the plan. So though this, it was made clear to me that over the years, however, the neighbors have actually done some quality, ample landscaping in that area of their own property where the tree had been. And so it was, they felt that it wasn't necessarily appropriate to put the, replace the tree in the exact location that it historically had been. So having received that feedback, uh, Sue Fields, our landscape designer, a few weeks ago went out and walked the property line with the Eastern neighbors and received their comments and feedback, some of feedback on what they were hoping to see from the landscaping here on the site that could mitigate their concerns. And so what you see here, is a revised landscape plan that incorporates some of their comments. So now instead of placing the new, the, essentially with the replacement tree here, what is instead proposed at the corner here, actually our next sheet has a zoom in, but at the corner here is proposed um, a native tree in lieu of the three rosebud trees. So I know Sue is going to determine at a later point what was the best native tree for the area that's um, uh, at a later point, but that's what's reflected here. And the additional benefit is that the, the tree is replaced, but it also will serve to screen the utility pole, which is here, and it's also been an issue of concern for the neighbors. And the other change is um, formerly, I believe there were ship laurel trees here along the property line that were about four to five feet for first in response to some, some grading change, um, some drainage change, changes that were made here. And then also we had received a comment at the last hearing that there was concerns that a four to foot, four to four foot to five foot tree would not sufficiently screen the garages. Now what's proposed is seven to eight foot, um, Arborvitae, the Thujas, I believe it's listed as an emerald green arborvitae. So this is significantly more height for screening. And we did provide an updated rendering. So now you can see here, this is that corner. So you have the screen of arborvitae. You have the new native tree here that when grown would effectively um, uh, block the utility pole or at least reduce its impacts. So this is the revised landscaping, as I said, that was the result of just ongoing discussions with the neighbors. So a four out of five, the fourth change out of the five is, uh, let me see here, this is changes to the site grading on the Eastern property line as well. So let me zoom in here. 
so I want to make sure I get this accurately. Let me zoom in a little more so everyone can see. All right, can you guys see this pretty well, this area here? Okay, so the plan that we showed at the last hearing had a wall here and then the grass swale. Instead, what's been changed is there's no longer a wall here on the property line. Instead, you have the arborvitae listed, but the new stone wall is actually here. So the wall is here and then there's a pathway around the building and the swale has been expanded here. So this is actually was in meetings with the town engineer after the last hearing. It was determined that this would be appropriate and actually um, would have less impacts with grading and everything of the sort. So um, notes from Tony indicate that per the town engineer's recommendations, as I mentioned, the wall has been moved, um, including a berm adjacent to the eastern neighbor at the edge of the swale. Um, land surveyors to field stake the proposed swale and an as-built of the completed swale um, required prior to CO. Um, it is a grass swale, not a rock swale, and it's slightly wider um, over the previous previous approved swale. Candidly, if you guys need more details on that, I'll have Tony jump in, but that is a general overview of the changes that have been reviewed with the town engineer in response to their comments. And this was really where we had the most back and forth with the engineer about the site. And the last revision out of the five is, let me see here, fortunately the simplest one for me to describe, which is in response to staff comments, the concrete sidewalk has been extended to the Eastern property line. So now there is a proposed new sidewalk along the expanse of the entire property line and proposed to continue down to Thimble Islands Road. So Russ, Tony, Sue, did I miss anything? <laughs> No, I think you got everything. I would like to comment that the tree that we're looking for that area would be a five to six inch caliper tree, which would be in the 25 to 30 foot height. And that the neighbors would like something native, which I think I agree with. And they mentioned how nice it would be to have an elm. And we actually might be able to do that to put another elm on Elm Street. But now they're that's all I have to add. <laughs> So the three elms, there might be four elms. I know, right? Let's keep going. <laughs> All right. Russ, Tony, anything else? No, you did a good job. Thanks. All right. Um, so that's it. I, the commissioners, please let me know if you have any questions. Kathy Anders here. Thank you, Ms. Miles. And I apologize for misidentifying you as the attorney on the first application. Oh. But, so. Um, at this point, we'll turn it over to our staff, uh, Evan Brining, uh, to review the staff report. Evan? All right. Uh, I think Megan covered most of the revisions um, in the comments from my last staff report. Um, they did withdraw that special exception for oversized accessory structures. Um, I did want to just ask that the applicant um, uh, maybe explain how the changes to the rear uh, landscape buffer may fit into the uh, coastal landscape bu buffer requirements from our section 5.1 D. Uh, it looked like they did use mostly salt tolerant species and and native ones as well. Um, the grading has been revised to meet our three to one slope requirements. Uh, the drainage issues, uh, like attorney Miles said, were um, worked out with our town engineer. And we did receive a statement from uh, Thomas Stevens uh, stating that um, the drainage would, uh, um, or or these plans would indicate a reduction in runoff uh, onto any neighboring properties. Um, they removed the stone wall and proposed a new retaining wall around uh, the detached garages. Um, they appear before the Stony Creek Architectural Review Board on May 1st. Uh, condition was recommended by that board for um, the lighting on the garages to have motion sensors and the uh, lighting around the uh, side entrances to be shielded to uh, stop any light trespass onto the neighbor's properties or property. Um, staff recommends two findings. Um, the commission finds that the proposed use of the property is consistent with the special exception criteria. 
Uh, and number two, that the coastal site plan is consistent with the goals and policies of the Coastal Area Management Act. Uh, staff recommends the following conditions. Uh, number one, all conditions of the previous approvals shall remain in full force and effect as they may still apply. Uh, condition number two, prior to the start of construction, uh, the issuance of a zoning permit or a building permit, the following shall be addressed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. Uh, erosion control measures shall be installed, uh, maintained throughout construction, and any supplemental measures installed that are deemed necessary by the zoning enforcement officer. Uh, condition three, uh, the landscaping must be maintained as an ongoing requirement of this approval. Uh, number four, any necessary measures to control any dust generated by fill. Uh, brought into the site or movement of earth material on the site shall be implemented if deemed necessary by the zoning enforcement officer. Um, any lighting has to be compliant with section 6.7 of our zoning regulations. Uh, condition six, per the positive recommendation of the Stony Creek Architectural Board, the proposed lighting on the garage and, and adjacent to the eastern side entrance uh, shall have motion sensors. These lights shall be full cut off and be shielded for the purpose of reducing the light trespass onto adjacent properties. Um, and the applicant shall provide monthly progress reports on the status of the proposed soil and erosion control measures to the zoning enforcement officer, unless waived by the zoning enforcement officer who may reinstitute uh, as they determine necessary. And that's it. Chuck Anders here. Thank you, Evan. Uh, Ms. Miles, do you, do you want to address um, um, Evan's question about the compliance with section 5.1 D. Um, I don't know if you saw that in the staff report. Yes, I did. Um, for the record, Megan Miles. Um, and I'm glad he brought it up because I forgot to address it. So my understanding is that section 5.1 D uh, requires that there be a vegetated buffer that protects the coastal resources from any site development, either within or adjacent to coastal resources. So here, our landscape plan provides, I'm gonna switch to our landscape plan since I'm still sharing my screen here. So presumably it's it's this robust landscape buffer here along the Northern property line. So it looks like the regulation requires that it, um, the plantings in this area should be both robust, so they clearly screen this area from the resource, but also that they should be salt tolerant native species well suited to the coastal resource environment. I I believe that these were intentionally designed by Sue to be well suited to this area, particularly the Stony Creek area, and to protect the coastal resource from the parking area and any um, open space use of the site. So Sue, so please feel free to jump in if there's anything further I can add to that. But particularly from existing conditions, which have almost nothing in this area, this significantly um, improves and protects the coastal resource in, I believe, in compliance with that section of the coastal management regulations. Hi, Chuck Anders, sure. Thank, thank you, Ms. Mm -hmm. Miles. Um, Evan uh, or staff or commission members, are there any questions before we or comments before we open up to the public? Nope, nothing else for me. Okay, then uh, let's see if any member of the public would like to comment. Would any member of the public like to comment? Evan. Uh, it looks like Barbara Chesler is first, but I'd just like to reiterate uh, if you'd like to make any comments, uh, the raise button, uh, the raise hand button down at the bottom of your screen, or you can type it in the chat that you'd like to make any comments. Uh, Barbara. Great. Thank you, everybody. Um, thank you, Commissioner. Um, we really appreciate the owners uh, listening to our concerns and making the changes uh, that have been presented this evening. So that's all good. I just have a question, and I, Megan, maybe I misunderstood you. Are we going from a grass uh, swale to a stone, or are we going from stone to grass? Because I thought it on the plans that we received today, it said grass to stone. But I thought you said the reverse. So I just wanted to double check. Uh, Barbara, I would just like to say, I sent you the second to last revision this afternoon and not- That's tonight. what I thought. Okay, all right, okay. So that's what we thought. We kept going, this doesn't look different, but okay. We, and then we reached out to um, 
Sue and she said, I'm sure it's on the plan. And I said, well, not the plan that we received. Okay, so what, what, wait, so now where are we? Are we stone to grass or grass to stone? And what, just whatever is better, I don't care. I mean, it, to, just for the swale. Tony Baldick, it, it is gonna be grass. Okay, all right, that's fine. Um, and um, and then the other question we just had was the sidewalk extension or the sidewalk at all? Is the sidewalk going to take part of the street or is the sidewalk on the property that's already there? And there's no sidewalks at all on Three Elms. We didn't quite understand what the purpose of a sidewalk was. I mean, a curb, but is, is there a need for a sidewalk? It is in the uh, area designated as uh, priority one sidewalk area in our uh, comprehensive plan or the POCD. So it is a requirement of a special exception approval. It is a, if that's a requirement by the town. Yes. Okay. Okay. You want a sidewalk? I believe, I believe, I believe there is a portion of a sidewalk out front. No, no sidewalk anywhere. No, not all the way, not till you get down to the, uh, to Thimble Islands Road. Okay. So, I it we were perfectly happy with no sidewalk, but if you need, just you know, I mean, it's kind of silly, but I think a curb would be would do the work. Just adds more concrete, more heat, more. But we'll let you make that decision. And it doesn't really go anywhere. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna go into our driveway, and it's gonna, and then it's gonna stop. So, I mean, there's all of six houses on Three Elms Road ab above this one. So, you're, you're, we can. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Chesler. Okay. So, appreciate that. Evan, if you would just send me the new revised, I'd appreciate that. You got it. And then my the uh also just I for the record it's I'm Barbara Chester and we live at eight three eight three Elms Road, um, and my, the only other question um we have is I, again and I don't I saw Kurt on here somewhere I if um I don't know when construction's going to begin but if there was any chance of getting the property all the weeds cut down we'd really appreciate it we did some of it ourselves just because it's overtaking our landscaping but if we could get some of that all the weeding cut back it would be great unless like construction is going to start very soon so thank you for your consideration appreciate it sure, thanks, sure. thanks for the changes thank, thank you mr uh are there other members of public wish to comment uh evan you see anyone uh, again, if you'd like to ask a question or make a comment, uh, the raise hand button down at the bottom of your screen, you can type in the chat that you'd like to participate. I do not see it. Are there any uh, further uh, questions or comments from commission members? Yeah, Chuck, I'm Massimo. Massimo, yes. All right. Um, yeah, so I, I really like the idea. I like the the thought of an elm being in front of the telephone pole, but I think what we have to keep uh, in light of is that the power line companies um, normally don't like trees over 15 feet because they end up coming there, getting tangled into the lines, they cut them down, and in the future, it becomes an issue uh, with the power lines. Um, and eventually, they probably would like to, uh, they go and they try to cut those trees down on the homeowners uh, if it becomes a nuisance. <laughs> um, and I know they do fuck off branches and that becomes a nuisance, but uh, I just want to bring that to light for future, you know, and, and for this project. Um, I think the trees should probably stay under 15 feet at mature growth, you know, because of that reason, next to the power lines. That was the only comment I had. Chuck Candace chair, thank you, Massimo. Um, I, I don't know if uh, staff or the applicant has any comments about the size of the tree and if, if or want to address that, that question. 
that raised by Massimo. I think it's an interesting point. And I am a, my sense is that proximity between trees and power lines is a continuously evolving issue. I I know that it's not in my client's interest as well to con, con, plant a tree there that's going to impact utility service to this property as well. So I, I do agree that I think it needs to be a height and location that would not risk restricting power lines. Um, my sense is that could probably be fleshed out once the final native tree is determined and location on site. Um, I'm just looking at the image here on my on my adjacent screen. Sue, do you have any other insight on typically how this has been working out these days? Um, yes, this is Sue, and I'm sorry. Susan Fields from um, Niantic, Connecticut, <clears throat> landscape designer. We often this happens and actually when meeting with the neighbors we discussed the placement of the tree would be we would work together with them to place it exactly in the location that would achieve the best screening of the telephone pole um uh, and but also logistically work with the situation so the spot that's necessarily on that plan may move here or there such that we can make it more accessible um, and less impactful on the uh, power lines. But I will say that it's the nature of the Northeast when we have our telephone poles and wires everywhere. It's just part of what kind of happens. Um, but we would be very thoughtful in placing the tree. Um, I don't think there's not many trees that say under 15 feet. So regardless, there would still be pruning going on in that in that corner regardless. Um, Here, Harry Smith, Town Planner. Um, again, I've been in and out of the application. So, as I re was that the pole with the transformer that you were everyone was looking to have taken down because it was no longer needed because the utility line runs on the far side of Three Elms Road. And I've got a Google image I can put up here if anyone would like to take a look. We can rotate it around. Um. I got it, Harry, if you want me to put it up. No, I already got it. If it's, is it coming up? No. Oh, I didn't hit share. So can everyone see that now? Yep. Yep. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so here's that pole that I don't see connected across the street. Maybe I'm missing the wire, but. And then the only other thing is a temporary uh, power here that was supplied. And then. The lines on the far side of the street. So it, it, I don't know if Tony Boldick, do you know if how they are proposing to provide power? Is it going to be so they, overhead drop down pole? Because how is that working? Yeah. So right now the temporary power is it, you know that that's where that is. Eventually sure. that'll get disconnected. Um, that'll come and the pole that you're showing on the right hand side there will come yep. across the pole that's sitting there empty, down and underground and into the building. Okay, so you're going to utilize that pole right here. Okay. So it's not so much tree growing up underneath a utility line like it is on the far side of the street. Exactly. Right. It's getting uh, it far enough away of screening it or placing it so that hopefully the, the power company doesn't need to trim it in any excessive kind of way. Does that make sense? Yes, that makes sense. Okay. Okay. Um, I guess I'll stop sharing my screen unless anybody wants to explore the image anymore. Thanks, Harry. Yeah. Okay. Chuck Anders here. Any other uh, comments from commission members or staff or the applicant? Uh, yes. I also have a comment. Uh, Joe. Without having firsthand knowledge of trying to visualize the, the sidewalk situation, um, if it's a situation that is not needed or they don't want it, but though it's a requirement of the town, maybe something could be worked out, if, if eliminated if, if it's in the best interest of everyone, <clears throat> but maybe not. I'm, I'm just throwing it out there about the sidewalk. Uh, Chuck Anderson, uh, thank, thanks, Joe. Harry and Evan, any 
thoughts or comments on sidewalk or our ability to not require it? Um, Harris Smith Town Planner, um, I can sh let me share my screen again because I'll have the the actual page from the Planning Conservation Development up here for another application. Um, and okay, hopefully everyone can see this colorful graphic. Um, so there's different ways that the priority sidewalk areas are depicted on this diagram, which is the one referred to in the zoning regulations. You can see along uh, Route 1, East Main Street, um, there's very specific colored areas. And when you get to West Main Street, they're extremely specific by property. Uh, then you have these circular areas, Indian Nag, Brantford Center, which are a little less um, um, prescriptive by street. Um, they just basically, you know, circle nodes where there's a little more pedestrian traffic. Um, and you'll see Stony Creek is treated the same way. Uh, you're zooming in here a little bit more. Well, that's too much. <laughs> um, I believe, you know, as Evan mentioned, Three Elms Road is within that. And I think it's one of these side streets here um, is within the circle, but it's a circle. It's not, you know, you, you could take it as the general Stony Creek area, I suppose. Um, and whether that's really, you know, the main streets, all the side streets, and several of them sort of wander off into the trees and how far up you'd actually require sidewalks. Um, there are a couple of ones that side streets do connect with trailheads. So there's that to consider too, but I don't believe four, three elms is one of those. I, I, I thought Evan mentioned that there was a partial sidewalk there now, is that accurate? Uh, again, I can pull up the Google image. I think there was some kind of remnants of a sidewalk on the site going back a whole long time. There is some kind of surface on the uh, property across the street, 3 3 Elms Road. Uh, but some of that is parking surface that's been created partially in the road, and some of that might be a walkway. It's not really well defined. I don't know, Evan, if there's anything else you're thinking of. Um, I'm looking at the street view now and it's a little bit less like a sidewalk than I remembered and more like torn up concrete. Yeah. Um, I think if the commission wants, I can write up a condition that the sidewalks don't necessarily have to be installed. Um, but before you guys make that decision, I would like to say that's one of the more common requests that come into our department and to other departments for sidewalks to be installed um, and specifically in Stony Creek. Oh, okay. Okay. It might make sense with this development, which is, you know, only separated uh, from um, sort of the main drag there by uh, the post office property, which I would imagine at some point might come in for redevelopment as well. So it could be a way to connect this site across the post office property right to the sidewalk system that exists there, as opposed to looking at it going the other direction. Okay, uh, okay thank you, uh, Chuck Anders here. Uh, thank you. Uh, okay, well, we, we can talk about that during deliberations. Uh, are there any other comments uh, from uh, the uh, commission members or staff or the applicant? I believe Barbara would like to speak again, the neighbor. Uh, sure. Well, for who? who? Um, excuse me. Uh, Barbara Chesler. The, the oh, Ms. Chesler? Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm, for the record, Barbara Chesler, 83 Elms Road. So just regarding the sidewalk, th there was a path that was along the old, um, whatever it was called, Three Elms House, that, that just kind of I don't even know where it went. It didn't really go anywhere. It just went to the, uh, there was an entrance on the side of the house and it, it just was a little kind of, uh, con uh, whatever, it wasn't concrete, but a, a little pathway. Um, there's never been, at least as long as we've been there now, which is now over 28 years, um, there's never been a sidewalk. There are, uh, there are also no sidewalks on any of the, um, 
perpendicular streets off of Three Elms Road in Stony Creek. And um, so, you know, I, I really just don't see a need for that. It's just, like I said, adds more heat, more um, concrete to the area. And there's so few people who live on the street and and there's very and there's virtually no traffic. I mean, everybody knows when people are coming and going. So, um, I just just to make that comment. I also um, just wanted to ask a question about the utility pole. That utility pole, I, I don't know why David Diaffi put that utility pole in, but he put it in. Eversource did not put it in, and. I just don't understand why we couldn't just connect if there's a transformer there. Why can't it just be connected to the pole that's right across the street? I mean, you hardly ever see poles that are, this would be a pole, pole to pole connection of 15 feet maybe. Um, and so it's it, it just adds more wires going across the street that are unnecessary or why couldn't it be connected underground? So just those are my comments. Thank you. Second chair, thank you, Ms. Chesler. Does the applicant want to address any of that? Sure. Again, for the record, this is Megan Miles. Um, this the sidewalk issue. I, I, I actually that's just always been on the plans, and it's never been a discussion topic with my client. So my sense is that they'll defer to the commission's preference on that. It's on the plan. They have no issues constructing it. So, again, defer to the commission with the utility pole. It's an existing utility pole that's all set up and ready for connection. It's an Eversource issue. There are stamps on the pole, like it's an Eversource pole. And to address the neighbor's concerns, a new native tree is proposed to effectively screen it. So it just seems like inefficient and superfluous work to um, change existing conditions. So that is it with the utility pole. Chuck Anders, Chair. Uh, Sharon, what do you got? Aaron Hutner, um, just one more consideration that goes along with what um, Joe was talking about, maybe not having the sidewalk there in terms of coastal resiliency. Um, again, you know, having a concrete surface may um, not add to the coastal resiliency of that area in the future if there's ever any flooding. And so with the swale that's being proposed is a wonderful thing and maybe keeping it more um, green and pervious would be better in terms of the coastal resiliency of that area. Chuck Andrews Chair, thank you, Sharon. Um, Any other uh, comments? Yes. Mr. Maybe. Chair, again, Megan Miles, I will note for the record that I did just receive a message from my client saying that they would prefer not to construct the sidewalk for this site. It was added as it seemed to be a requirement because of the POCD, but if the commission is amenable, they actually would like to not construct it, apparently. So. Sure, thank, you. thank you, Ms. Miles. Mm -hmm. Any other comments from commission members or staff? Hearing none, then we'll close uh, these matters as a public hearing. And again, something we can probably take up uh, after we complete our public hearing. So thank you very much. Thank you again, everyone. Okay, that brings us then to item number five, which is uh, Paula Murphy, applicant owner, 35 East Main Street, special exception, and uh, form a two family to a three family. I think that it's described as accessory apartment, but I don't know if that's accurate. So. Harry, could you make uh, Paula Murphy a uh, co-host, please? Oh, I just did. Oh, thank you. So she'll be able to uh, unmute herself at will. And looks like you are unmuted. Okay. Am I unmuted? Yes, you are. Uh, you probably should turn the audio off of whatever can you're you hear looking. Me? Yeah, we can hear you now. Yeah. Okay. I, sorry, I I can't hear all. Hold on. Hold on. Bear with me one second. My, sure. No, they can hear me here. My um, my computer for some reason the volume isn't working on my computer, so I have both my cell phone and my computer on. So hold on one moment. Oh, uh, okay.
Recording in progress. Recording in progress. Recording in progress. Sorry. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, we're getting the feedback, but if okay, you pick you one of them, me? yes. Okay, sorry. So you're on with your iPhone and your computer. Yeah. I can I'm unmute you. I can unmute you and your iPhone, and you could mute the computer. Okay. And I turn the volume that. off. You did? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Um, why don't we try that? Why don't you, I, I'll just unmute you on the iPhone. There you are. Can you hear me? Yeah, there we go. Okay. Okay. Sorry about <laughs> <Great>. that. <laughs> so sorry. Um, I, because we were going back and forth so much. Um, what, what did you need me? Sorry to explain. Uh, Maybe I'll just that. give an overview of, of what you're proposing and we'll ask it. Evan to explain more detail when he goes over the staff report. Okay, so we um, we have a current two family, um, and uh, we are seeking to do an accessory apartment on an already finished third floor. And this is the um, proposed parking plan that I worked with uh, an engineer, um, with Evan and with the town engineer. Uh, to make sure that the parking would be sufficient for the um, for the area there, um, that's that's kind of uh, kind of where where we're at. But the 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 third floor is already finished from when the house was built by my husband's great grandfather in um, 1896. Um, it has been used by family throughout the years. Uh, we're just trying to to do it the right way and um, make it a legal accessory apartment to be used by family. Uh, Chuck Engineer, th thank you, Ms. Murphy. Uh, Evan, you wanna review this with us? Uh, sure, uh, like Paula described for us, uh, they're taking an existing third story and uh, converting this two family uh, residential home into a three family. Uh, they're also making some grading changes in the back here for the required parking spaces that need to be installed. Um, they meet the bulk requirements of the R1 district, uh, except for the lot error per unit calculation, which they received a variance uh, from the Zoning Board of Appeals for in March. Um, they meet the off-street parking requirements. Um, they will be doing a uh, little bit of clearing and one significant tree is proposed to be removed. Um, the applicant did not provide an erosion and sediment control plan. However, did they, they did, uh, show some erosion control measures on their site plan. Um, they meet the earth slope, uh, three to one ratio requirement. Uh, and based on the application materials, it appears that the special exception criteria are satisfied. Uh, staff recommends one finding that the commission finds that the proposed use is consistent with the special exception criteria uh, and the following conditions that any lighting has to be compliant with section 6.7 and that prior to the construct start of construction erosion control measures shall be installed uh, and as may be directed by the zoning enforcement officer necessary measures to control any dust generated by fill brought into the site or movement of earth material on site shall be implemented. Uh, Chuck Kennedy, sir. Thank you, Evan. Uh, are there questions or comments from commission members before we open up to the public? Sharon? Um, yeah, Sharon Hutner. I have um, a question about um, the parking requirements. Are those set in stone? Do we have to adhere to the parking requirements? Because it seemed to me from reading the staff report and looking at the plans that the only reason that the reason why the significant tree is being removed is to uh, make sure that there's the required parking. So my question is, do we have to do that? Um, I believe there is a modification of parking uh, requirements option. However, it does require a special exception application to be submitted. 
so that would require public noticing and it would probably require the applicant to come back in September if we wanted to make that change. Well, and you know, once again, this is, you know, Marcy talked about this uh, last, at the last meeting, you know, if a landscape architect would have been brought on board from the beginning of the project, maybe we wouldn't have this problem to begin with. And, um, you know, we're having this meeting about all the landscape regs and trying to save as many trees as we possibly can in town. So I really don't want to make more work for the applicant, but I also feel really strongly that it's um, there's sidewalk there, and um, if we can somehow ease up the parking requirement, I would really think that that might be a good idea. My my question would be: Is there a need for park? Is there a need for the space? Uh, what I assume it's based on the number of units, and we need so many spaces. What what's the requirement? Uh, I believe it is um, two spaces required for two bedroom uh, units and one space required for one bedroom units. So that totaled down to five spaces required. Um, and Paula, maybe you can confirm, but right now there's three spaces on site? Four there's spaces. actually four. There's actually four. So is there room for another space without cutting down the tree? I guess that would be the issue. It, 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 uh, to be honest, I was walking the property um, two days ago. I'm not even convinced that that tree it, where it is is entirely on our property. So we, while walking the property of the other day, I, I, you know, I'm no landscape architect, but I feel like the, the way that the tree is leaning and where it, it might not, need to come down it, it, it i don't believe it needs to come down but so you can put the parking space in without taking the tree down yes okay i mean that would be ideal i guess yeah that would be ideal yeah i, I i'm all about saving the trees too so if i if i can save it and not to, i absolutely will not so, but I, I, I don't, I, I think there's a way that we can do it where we do not need to take that tree down. It's right on the property line. So some of it's on the neighbor's property, you may not even have authority to take it down. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Well, we can, maybe we can put that as a condition or something. We can uh, address that. Okay. Are there uh, um, any other questions, comments from commission members before we open up the public? Uh, okay, then let's open up to the public. Any member of the public wish to comment? Evan, you see anyone? I do not see anyone. Okay, then um, we can. Uh, are there any further comments by the applicant or commission members or staff? Yeah, sorry, Jerry yeah. Hunter. I don't know whether this is appropriate. Is this, can this um, accessory apartment come under the category of affordable housing? Do we do anything about setting a standard for that? I don't um, believe this is coming in as an accessory apartment application. That is an error on the agenda. This is coming in as a three family. So would the standards apply? Not the ones we typically utilize. Okay. Harry, is there any option for it? Uh, no, uh, the only way you could require the unit is if it's approved as an accessory apartment. I don't believe that's what's being applied for. Is that correct, Kevin? Yes, this is a, this is a three family application. Okay. Okay, well, thanks uh, for the clarification. Hi, this is Masmo here. Um, does does the that existing two family uh, being converted into a three family? Does it have um, existing three separate like um, uh, utilities and uh, water? You know, and eat. It does. Uh, it does. Right, so so it's already a three family. Okay, great. All We're right, just trying you. to do it the right way. Beautiful. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. 
Any other questions or comments from commission members or staff? Hearing none, then we'll close this matter as a public hearing and uh, I think we will discuss this uh, after we complete our public hearings. Thank you, Ms. Murphy. Thank you. Uh, next item number six is the Planning Zoning Commission is the applicant. This is a zoning regulation amendment to modify certain sections of the regulations regarding uh, family and group child care homes to conform with a recent law that requires us to make these changes. Uh, so I guess, Harry, are you going to summarize that for us? Uh, I am Harry Smith Town Planner. I'll just share my screen and walk everyone through it. Um, you should be able to see document titled proposed amendments to Brantford zoning regulations, May 10th, 2024. Um, so in a nutshell, uh, the requirements of the state law, um, and they, we do have terms already in the, uh, um, the uh, definition section, the zoning regulations, uh, but they are not quite current with the terminology and statute that was amended by the public act in 2023. So proposing here, first off, changing the terminology to reflect the language used in the statute, um, and then the other requirement is to treat these um, the way single family residences are treated, um, which is currently a requirement for a zoning permit um, in the residential zones. Um, so right now, daycare center, group daycare home, let's call them re-labeled as um, uh, family child care home and a group child care home, they are, um, special exception uses in the um, existing residential zone. So I'm proposing to remove those listings in the special exception category, which is 33A4, and add them both into the uh, uh, permitted use or zoning permit required category, which is 33A2. So that would comply with one part of the uh, this public act. And the other part is to basically you can't have any of this criteria because it may no longer be special exception uses. So proposing striking all this, this is uh, 7.6 is um, uh, from the special exception requirements section of the regulation. So it would delete all of these our requirements that have been in place. Um, so that's essentially it. Um, but in doing a little more detailed look at the um, terminology in the statute. Um, I saw that, um, again, I'm just gonna actually go down to that. Let me go back. And it's attached here. So if you go down, so here's the actual wording from the public act it says no zoning regulation shall treat any family child care home and they deleted the word registered or group child care home located in a residence and licensed by the office of early childhood pursuant to this section other section of the regulations and it may or differ from single or multifamily dwellings um so what i thought i should recommend to the commission is slightly changing the terminology here in the uh, staff report I just had as defined in Connecticut General Statutes 19A-77. Um, but I thought we'd add in all the words from that statutory reference and say it also only is located in a residence and licensed by the Connecticut State Office of Child Early Childhood. So that would keep the definition as tight to the statute as you really could. Um, other than that, um, and let me just mention that we do the required referrals to uh, DEP, and they replied with the finding that the uh, proposed uh, amendments are consistent with the Coastal Management Act. Uh, we also heard from the South Central Connecticut Regional Planning Commission, I believe yesterday, um, and they had no comments. They found no municipal impact of the proposed amendment. Um, there is no specific reference in the POC to it, the POCD to it, excuse me. And with respect to the comprehensive plan of zoning, um, you know, essentially that is the regulations and the zoning map as they've evolved over time. 
Um, so you're required to find the amendment in accordance with that. But the bottom line is essentially the commission has no choice or required by statute to make this change to be in compliance with uh, state law. So recommending approval um, with the modifications, um, with the change in those two definitions as shown, um, and recommending uh, an effective date of July 12th, 2024. Are there any questions? Thanks, Jerry. Chuck Anders, Chair. Um, uh, if there are no questions from commission members, then let's go ahead and open it up to the public. Does any member of the public wish to comment? Do you see anyone, Evan? Uh, again, if you wanted to ask any questions or make any comments, uh, the raise hand button down at the bottom of your screen, you can type into the chat that you'd like to participate. But I do not see any. Great. Any, fur any further questions or comments from commission members and staff? Hearing none, then I think we can close this matter as a public hearing and we can take this up later on. Thank you, Eric. Thank you. That brings into item number seven of our public hearings, which is Sean Jeffrey, applicant owner, 22 Beachwood Road. This is a special section for oversized accessory structure. Is the applicant ready to proceed with that one? Okay, I just made him a co-host, so. Yeah, and it looks like Chris Golo is raising their hand, so. Yeah. Sorry, can you guys hear That's me? okay, we can. Perfect. Let me share my screen here. All right, can you guys see that? Um, property is a little bit over three quarters of an acre. It's uh, located within the R4 zone. Um, all the bulk standards, no issues there other than the side um, setback, which we've got a variance for already. Um, we thought this was the best spot because the accessory uh, building can't be in front of the primary and towards the rear uh, in the land trust, uh, there's a little bit of wetlands that are, it's greater than a hundred feet, but we've already been working with Jamie on, uh, she had one comment on just tightening the silt fence, which um, we've already done. And uh, there's no plumbing associated with the, the barn out there. So we won't have to connect to the existing septic. Um, and let me just show you a rendering of what the barn will look like. So it'll be something along the lines like this. It'll be 24 by 30. So it's under the 750 square foot uh, max allowed. And we're just looking for just the height. It will be roughly about 23 feet, I believe. Um, so it looked like that coming down the the driveway, but that's kind of that in a nutshell. Uh, thank you. And, and anything else? Uh, no, I think I think that's just about it. I don't know if you guys have any comments that I can address, but yeah, sure. I'm just primarily just seeking that uh, height variance. Great. Special exception. Great. Uh, thank thank you. Um, Evan, did you prepare the staff report on this one? Uh, I did. Um, like uh, Jeremy said, this is for uh, oversized accessory structure exceeding 15 feet in height. Uh, it's around 22, 23 feet. Um, they also did receive a variance from the ZBA in March or in May uh, to allow the structure to be three feet from the side property line. Um, the applicant meets the criteria of our accessory uses and structures section. Um, they meet the off street parking requirement. Uh, they did not submit a lighting plan, but a condition has been added that any proposed lighting uh, has to meet the requirements of section, section 6.7. Uh, based on the application materials, they meet the special exception criteria. Uh, staff recommends three conditions. Number one is that this 
Uh, approval exclusively applies to the construction of a detached garage that includes a second floor, not to be used as an accessory apartment or an additional unit. No change in use from this approval. The no change in use from the approved single family home is a part of this application and the addition of any units or an accessory apartment would need to be approved by the planning and zoning commission. Uh, condition number two, prior to the start of construction, erosion control measures shall be installed and any necessary measures deemed uh, to be um, necessary by the zoning enforcement officer to control any dust uh, generated by fill brought into the site or movement of earth material on the site shall be implemented. And any lighting has to be compliant with section 6.7. Um, and before we go to public comment, I just wanted to mention that we did receive two letters of support uh, from the neighbors, and one of them is the uh, property owner of um, the adjacent property where the garage is proposed to be three feet uh, from that property. Owner. Chuck Andrews here. Thank you. Evan. Any questions from commission members or staff before we open up to the public? Hearing none, then let's see if there's any public comment. Any members of the public wish to comment? Evan, you see anyone? I do not see anyone. Uh, again, you can type into the chat or hit the raise hand button if you'd like to participate, uh, but I do not see any. Great, thanks. Any further comments by the applicant or commission members or staff? Hearing none, then we'll close this matter as a public hearing. And again, this is something we can probably review later on. So thank you very much. So that completes the listed public hearing items. Um, we have two sets of minutes to review. I don't know, uh, given the, I know a lot of people are absent. Uh, I mean, we still have a quorum. I don't know if everyone was here for all of those. Um, the May 2nd one, uh, that was the one about the regulations where we cleaned up. Was everyone uh, here, uh, those, Joe Vaiuzo, were you here? Yeah. On the, or what? what's going on? Yeah. Harris and Tom Planner, uh, the minutes that not, show that Sharon Hutton was not there on the 2nd, correct? correct? That's correct. Okay. And uh, I mean, we could, Joe, Joe Vaiuzo was there and Massimo was there. I mean, we could theoretically approve them. Yes, I was there. Massimo. Yeah, great. Um, yeah, I mean, it's up to you if you want to delay it. Um, I just note for the record that um, I did, um, the, the commission's clerk did um, add in the wording of all the uh, zoning regulation amendments proposed that were dis discussed. And um, I went through those and there was some formatting issues for because of the software and um, double check the recording and the comments under each item but um, maybe you may feel the other commissioners may want to look at that because I'm looking at at this as a template to go ahead and prepare a draft or a couple of drafts of uh, zoning regulation amendments for the commission so I want to make sure I got right I think I didn't go for every little item back to the recording, but the ones I was a little unclear about, I did go back, so. Um, okay, yeah, maybe we should wait because if you're gonna use this as a template and maybe, yeah. okay. Okay, and then maybe while we're at it, why don't we just defer on June 6th too? You want okay, to? sure. So we'll skip on minutes. So let's move back then to the- um, By the way, there was no correspondence. Oh, there's no correspondence, great. Well, let's move back into our public hearing items. Uh, again, starting with items, I think it's public hearing two, two, three, and four. That's three elms. Um, Evan, can you pull up the staff report on that one? Sure. And I think that the the issues. I think there were a couple of issues that were raised. One was the. Uh, uh what was it the side the possible tree issue i think uh Massimo, you raised that issue and then the sidewalk uh of whether we are required to do the sidewalk um my sense was the for the tree issue it sounded like there was some flexibility in terms of locating it uh you know that it, i think they indicated it'd be tough to get a tree that was totally under 15 feet neighbors seemed to like it <laughs> and uh you know, you may have to do some pruning at some point because you always have to do some pruning, but there'd be some flexibility in locating it. 
that would hopefully provide the goals of providing screening and having a nice tree and hopefully in a spot where you won't be chopping it down eventually. So, so my sense was on the tree, maybe we just, you know, leave it as is. And on the sidewalk, um, I couldn't, I understand it's recommended as part of the POCD, but I didn't see our regulate, even though it's, I didn't, is there a regulation that says you must do it? <laughs> uh, yeah. In the, zoning, in the zoning regs or what? There basically is. Um, Where is that? Section 615. Yeah. What does it say? It Sidewalks. says. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Aaron. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, sidewalks shall be required along all major roadways and in other locations with high pedestrian and or vehicular traffic in accordance with the plan of conservation and development development transportation plan. Um, I could see the argument for this neighborhood not necessarily falling into that description, um, but, you know, I really relied on that uh, map from the POCD uh, that Harry shared with us before. Um, but yeah, you know, commission wants this removed. It's I typed up a pretty basic condition for prior to the start of construction. The site plan should be amended uh, to show the removal of the sidewalk. Um. Okay. Uh, I, I'll give some general thoughts. Is it sounds like it's it, it is it it may not be needed here. It's not a main street. I think uh, Ms. Chesler said that. There's no purpose in their street that have sidewalks. The applicant says you could, we don't need it. There's environmental reasons, sure, and invention and coastal reasons. Um, I, I, I mean, that's all reasons why we should remove it. I guess the reasons for it is that if you do it for this, you got to do it for anyone else. And they, you know, <laughs> you know, there's a precedent issue. If someone says, oh, I don't like side, and you know, why are you making the sidewalks? You make them put it in. I think you may be able to distinguish that. I mean, this as I'm reading that description again, in other locations with high pedestrian or vehicular traffic. And maybe, maybe that's a supplemental. In other words, you got to do two criteria. One, it has to be in the POCD, and it also has to be, um, you know, meet that separate criteria high pedestrian or high vehicle vehicular traffic. I don't think it meets either of those. So I suppose there could be a rationale for saying that it's not required here. So in any event, let's let's uh what, what do other people think? Uh let's go around. Joe Vayuzo, you got any thoughts? Well I'm I'm relying on the uh the neighbor was saying that it wasn't needed as well. And um so I don't have a unfortunately I don't have a, a vision of what what it looks like is this actually on the main road of, of, of there or is it more of a site is not more of a side street type of thing um, or is it actually on the main street right by the post office is this is the the structures behind the existing post office um, and this side street here um, like Chuck said is not a it's not a main thoroughfare yeah. Harris Midtown plan. I mean, that would make a lot of sense because I think um, in recalling the map, it had that sort of circular area around Stony Creek, Pine Orchard, Indian Neck. So if that is indicated on the map and then you have the, that last portion of that sentence that says, um, and in other locations with high pedestrian vehicular traffic in accordance with let's say, I would read that maybe within these circle, half circle areas, then you apply that second part of the standard and say, well, within those circled areas, if it's a, um, a location with high pedestrian vehicular traffic, then you require the sidewalk. If not, no. And actually, I think there was another um, new house at Buena Vista, which I think is in the circled area. And I don't believe we required a sidewalk for that either. That's down to the south, at least one or two streets of this. I, I think that is covered in the circular area on the plan, though. Great. Thank I'm you. Like, I'm leaning, for me, I'm leaning towards not having a sidewalk, but I wanted, I would like to see it worded in such a way it doesn't set a precedent like Chuck was talking about. That's more important to me, the precedent, than, uh, than actually 
not putting the sidewalk in because if, if that's the case, then the sidewalk should go in because I don't want to have, uh, in my opinion, I don't want to have it jeopardize where, where, when we do want it. And, and all of a sudden they come up with a, with this situation that we uh, said that uh, we denied it on this one. So as long as it doesn't set a precedent, I'm, I'm, I'm all for not, uh, not approving a, a, or not agreeing to a, a sidewalk. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. Massimo? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I'm slightly conflicted, but, you know, my first priority is the safety of the people. Um, and there is a lot of walking around that's done in those areas. Um, there's future expansions of homes probably going to end up happening in the future. I think that's something that we need to consider. Families, uh, baby strollers, uh, just people walking. I mean, you go around that bend. When I drive and I go around the bend like that, um, you know, it's uh, I, I need to really be on high alert, make sure nobody's walking in the street where I don't hit them. Um, and that's just a personal thing. And, uh, you know, if, you know, our requirements are that we should have the sidewalk there. Um, I'm, I'm looking more for the future on extending sidewalks there. I also believe that um, you know, it's around the bend from the, uh, from, from the post office. Uh, it would be a good connection. Like Harry said, that post office is to be, uh, probably going to come in for some, um, you know, further, uh, enhancements or, or expansions. Uh, I, I would say, yeah, I would like to see a sidewalk there. It's just, I feel safer, you know, um, putting sidewalks where we can. Thank you very much. Thanks, Massimo. Uh, Sharon? Yeah, um, I, I'm leaning the other way towards not having a sidewalk there. I walk in that area all the time, um, every season of the year practically, and there really is very little traffic on that street. And um, again, for environmental and coastal resiliency, reasons I would lean toward um, not having the sidewalk, but I respect what Joe said in terms of not setting a precedent. So if we could word it in a way that we won't get caught um, not being able to put in a sidewalk where we feel we really need one, um, then I guess I would lean towards putting in the sidewalk. Uh, could we do a finding sort of mirroring the language of uh, 615D um, that says, you know, this is not a major roadway um, and or another location with high pedestrian and or vehicle traffic? Yeah. Um, yeah, in other words, mm -hmm. that's to distinguish it when someone else tries to claim that, uh, well, you did it for them, you gotta do it for us. Uh, yeah, I mean, that would be the way to do it if, if we decide not to do the sidewalk. So um, it is, it, and there's still be a gap on the post office property, right? I mean, it, it, there's, I mean, you can make the corner, there's still a no sidewalk, and then there'd be this, it's the second property in, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, I mean, so, you know, yeah, there would you'd be uh, waiting for the post office to come in for some redevelopment that would enable you to connect the sidewalk to the sidewalk along three uh, Thimble Islands Road. Right. And uh, and there are no sidewalks on the I I don't know I. If there, if it, if it is a dead end, is it a dead end street? I assume. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and there's no other sidewalks on that street, I guess, uh, or most perpendicular streets. I guess I'm okay not having it, uh, and then have the finding that you know is the reason why that you know put that in the finding as. Um, it is not a major roadway um, and, and not at a high pedestrian 
or area of high vehicular traffic. So um, are, are we okay then on the tree then as proposed? I, 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 I don't wanna brush over that, but I, I know that was the possible you'd raise that issue, but I, I thought, yeah, they, they address that, so. Yeah, I thought they addressed it fine. Thank Great. you. Okay, Evan, can you pull up the staff report? I can. I was still wordsmithing that finding. Okay. You can see it. continue to do it. Okay. Um, so those are the, you made three findings, the, the coastal finding, and then that one, are we okay? Is there anything else? Um, that, so three is new in the findings, the conditions are the ones you read during the public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we added that B uh, to B, right? Yes. Okay. Can you just scroll down to, so we see the whole you got uh, one, yeah. Okay, and I know you sent out the, the you sent us out in the staff report, so we have paper copies, and it's we've seen it before, so you don't have to read it all again. <laughs> That's what I'm like. Um, <laughs> okay, then if if that's okay, so there's uh, would someone like a mo make a motion to approve uh, these uh, these two applications? I guess because it's the special exception coastal site plan and the six point eight. Uh, in accordance with the draft uh, staff report, the, the recommendations in the staff report, uh, the, the findings and conditions as amended, including the highlighted ones in, in yellow that are currently displayed in front of us. Massimo makes that motion to approve. Okay, Mas motion to approve made by Massimo. Is there a second? I use those seconds. Joe Vallejo seconds. Any further discussion? All those in favor, Joe Vallejo? Joe Vallejo in favor. Massimo? Massimo is in favor. Sharon? Sharon Hutner is in favor. And Chair also is in favor. So that application is approved. So then let's move on then to item number five. This was uh, Paul Murphy, the 35 East Main Street, the two family to three family. And again, the I think the only issue on that one was saving the tree. Uh, and I believe the applicant indicated that she didn't think it needed to be removed. Um, so, okay, um, so you, you put that in? Good. Yeah, just for the record, um, me, Paula, and her civil engineer had gone back a few times over the last few weeks. And I left the comment in, about the significant tree in there. Uh, cause one of the plans had indicated it was significant. Um, but the final plan that they did submit did not list it as a significant tree. Uh, so that's why I used the language, the potentially significant tree adjacent to the Eastern property line shall not be removed. Okay. So we'll throw that in there. And if it turns out they have to remove it, they can come in and seek a modification and, and say, Hey, it's not significant or I'll seek a parking modification or something like that to get fewer. I mean, I, I do have some hesitancy of it's three units three separate dwelling units and it's only five spaces. So I, you know, probably wouldn't want to reduce that if we had to. So, so with that then, uh, are there any other comments on that? And if, if, if not, this one, I want to make a motion to approve the application by adapting the staff recommendation, including the findings and conditions, uh, including as, as amended, including the new item three that is highlighted and is currently displayed in front of us. Sharon Hutner will um, move that. Motion to approve by Sharon. Is there a second? Massimo Ligori seconds. Second by Massimo. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Vallejo? Joe Vallejo in favor. Massimo? Massimo is in favor. Sharon? Sharon Hutner is in favor. And Chair is also in favor. So that takes care of item number five. Item number six was the text amendment uh, regarding family daycares or 
family group child care homes conform with the statute. Harry, you want to pull that up, the uh, your staff report and recommendation? Sure. So you should be able to see again this document proposed amendments to Brantford zoning regulations May 10th, 2024. Uh, so this contains all the changes. Um, the only modification would be to replace this little table here with the day child care related terms with this one, with the additional wording in yellow, which would add to the definition of family child care home as well as group child care, care home, uh, the terminology located in a residence and licensed by the Connecticut State Office of Early Childhood. Great. Yeah, I think, okay. uh, right. You you explained, Harry, that we're, we're actually required to do this by state law. It's yes. essentially a way of, of making it easier or uh, less restrictive, uh, less less bureaucracy to if you want to do some child care operations. So they're allowed as of right versus you can't require special permits. So, yeah. So, so uh, yeah, in a motion, as, as you well know, <laughs> you make a need to say that you consider the plan of conservation development and that your decision is in accordance with the comprehensive plan. Um, probably note the change to the proposed um, um, amendments in the May 10th document and send effective date. Great. Is there then a motion to uh, approve this zoning text amendment, including the amendments as outlined by Harry, shown highlighted in yellow in the May 10th document? as described in uh, as presently displayed before us on our screens with the finding that is consistent with the comprehensive plan of development and uh, or it's in accordance with the comprehensive plan of development and consistent with the uh, plan of conservation and development uh, in accordance with the comprehensive plan and consistent with the plan of conservation and development with an effective date of when Harry? Uh, July 12th. July 12th. So I'm going to make that motion. Joe will make that motion. Joe Vaiuso mo mo makes uh, that motion to approve. Uh, is there a second? Sharon, I will second that. We'll give it to Sharon the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Vaiuso? Joe Vaiuso in favor. Massimo? Massimo is in favor. Sharon? Sharon Hutner is in favor. And chairs also in favor. So that zoning amendment is approved and we're uh, in compliance with state law. That brings us into item number seven, which is Sean Jeffrey, applicant and owner. That was again the oversized accessory structure. I don't think, I don't know if there are any comments on that one. Uh, were there? I don't, I don't even recall. No. Uh, no. Pretty straightforward. So, okay, and Evan, you're, you're displaying the uh, proposed uh, conditions of approval. I think you already reviewed that with us as part of the public hearing process. Um, it seems to comply with the regulations. So if there are no comments, someone will make a motion to approve this application by adopting the staff recommended uh, conditions currently displayed in front of us, the three conditions. Massimo Lagori approves. Massimo makes the motion to approve. Is there a second? No second. Second by Joe Vaiuso. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Vaiuso. Joe's in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. Sharon. Sharon Hutner is in favor. And, and I also would like to commend the applicant for consulting his neighbors. Thank you. And the chair is also in favor. So that application is approved. Okay, we covered the minutes um, and there was no correspondence or we actually deferred on the minutes. So we'll just wait on that. Under old business, um, there's a number of items that require public hearing. That's uh, items number one and two are set, scheduled for a public hearing on our next, uh, at our next meeting on July 18th. And that brings us into item number three, which is East Main Street, American Polyfilm Inc., uh, 755 East Main Street, care of Matt Casella. 
This is a site plan modification addition to a building for a manufacturing use. Um, is that something we don't, it, we, we don't need a public hearing on that? Is the applicant ready to review that with us? Yes, I am. Um, proceed. Just share my screen. All right, can you see that? Not um, yet. Okay, let's go. All right. There you go. There we go. All right, so yeah, um, we're seeking for this, just the expansion of uh, manufacturing use within an industrial district. Um, we've previously got a variance for the extension of this pallet shed down here for storage purposes. Um, they do want to add on in here more of like an office area uh, for their production. Um, there, I know there's been some comments about some of the existing uh, landscaping. And I know back here, there's some existing vegetation over there, but I know with, they installed a, a vinyl fence when they did the animal shelter over. Um, so I, I don't know how the commission is going to want to deal with that. Um, aside from that, there is some missing landscaping from the, I believe the 2017 plan. Um, so yeah, this was, the expansion was previously approved in 2013, I believe. And then 2017, there was a, they allowed for the first storage shed over here. Um, as for the parking, we have this reserve area up here. Um, from the owners, we've been told that there's, I think six employees roughly at a time where we have 10 parking spots uh, proposed. So we believe that's more than enough. Um, if we do have to uh, need the additional space, this area is allowed for that. Um, the landscaping in the front uh, is, looks pretty good. It's, uh, it's well kept. Um, but like I, I said, we aren't uh, opposed to, you know, filling in over here and possibly over here to, to match that, that old plan. Um, and then, uh, last thing I'll say is if we can ask <laughs> to get a waiver for the sidewalk in the front, you know, you guys probably wouldn't want, don't want to hear that right now, but have to make the claim. Um, uh, the reason for that is just you know, just the abutting properties. Uh, I know the transfer station is located down here. And if I travel further east, uh, I believe 699 also has a um, very steep slope with a guide rail um, that's near the road. So it's just one of those things where I, I don't know how far, you know, the sidewalk's really gonna go and then travel up this way. Uh, it's owned by the government. So I don't know. And that's about 550 feet of frontage where I don't know if there'll ever be a sidewalk uh, put in for there. But um, if it needs to happen, it's totally up to the commission's discretion. And, uh, you know, it's long as we can move forward on the addition, then we're good with that. So thank you. Thank you. Harry, did you want to review the staff report with us? Uh, sure. Harry Smith, Tom Planner. Um, let me share my screen, just run through the report. Um, so I'm going to jump right to, um, I think, um, the changes requests that were really well covered. I did note them in the staff report, um, with the exception, I think, of the uh, several of the spaces that are going to be taken up by the uh, expansion of the pallet storage shed and the uh, addition of the building are uh, replaced other places on the existing paved surface. Um, so, for example, the handicapped spots be moved over and uh, flipping to the plan quickly. Um, there are spaces added here that are just basically pavement for um, purposes of trucks delivery, whatever, but they're now gonna be parking spaces. Um, so there's the handicap spot and uh, these spaces added here. And then this part of the reserve parking area has already been approved. Uh, that happened in 2017. Um, so you're basically just adding this row here 
um, to the reserve parking area. And I think all together, um, you would still, with the reserve parking area spaces and what's on plan here would be two above, is it? Uh, the required number for the floor area the addition and the existing building, I think, is what I got in the uh, out of the plan and the parking section there. Which is down here in the corner. Um, so I can blow that up a little bit. Well, that's way too much. So I don't know if that's legible at this point. I can see it on my screen. Um, so it shows the overall parking approved, uh, nine spaces to be on site. And maybe I'll let you explain this, <laughs> Jeremy. Yeah, sorry. So, yeah, the reserve, uh, I believe we have accounted for uh, 12 additional, uh, 12 or or 13 additional. Um, however, there are nine or 10 provided on the plan. And as I previously said, I think at max capacity, there's six employees there. Right. Um, so they're never, never over. But, uh, you know, if that additional parking ever did become a problem, um, you know, there's no issue with uh, the owner putting that in uh, later on. Okay. Uh, technically, um, um, so if you go to the regulations, you've got this section uh, 6.5J, which allows deferral of media installation parking spaces. Um, and you have three conditions for the a commission to consider in granting a deferral. Uh, one is clearly met by the plan that's been submitted. Uh, number two, um, I asked Mr. Preddy to um, document um, the concerns or any, his feeling about the adequacy of the parking as well as that of the owner. He just said, in accordance with my conversation with the owners of American Poly for Milk, Inc., the max number of employees of the facility, as mentioned by Jeremy, is six employees. Therefore, it's our opinion that 10 spaces currently depicted on the plan are more than adequate for the use. Additionally, the 12 reserve spaces to be built in future rises. So that's been documented for the record. Um, and then this number three would have to be addressed with a note um, probably added to the site plan. Um, and I don't know if that note's already there. I didn't frankly look. And reviewing this super closely. Do you know if that note's on there yet, Jeremy? I know you've got. Uh... Let me check. Give me one one minute. Sure. Yeah, I don't think I see it, but it could be added for sure. Okay, well, so it would be sorry. So I'll add that as a condition. And um, so, assuming the commission's okay with that, that's how that would could proceed. Um, and then going back to the landscaping, um, the last. Um, Approved plan. Let's see what we got up here. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Didn't have it up here. Um, Bear with me for a second. I'm going to have to find the uh, the old landscaping plan. Um, I could share it for you if you'd like. Um, why don't I do it just so I can use my cursor? But if I'm having trouble, I'll defer to you. Hang on a sec. Um, Okay, there it is. 
So this is uh, the 2017 plan as revised uh, in spring of 2018 to comply with some of the conditions of uh, the 2017 approval. Um, so most there was, you know, it's a well landscaped area between the building and the parking lot and our uh, Route 1 East Main Street. Um, and looking out there, I mean, this tree is over here and many of the plants do not match what's on the plan. Um, I don't have a concern with that, particularly, I mean, it, this is a well landscaped uh, strip along the front of the building. Um, there's a landscaping area here. One of these is in place. There's a little landscaping bed here. Um, and there's several, I think they're, instead of the arborvitae, I think there's something like inkberry or something. I wasn't sure the low shrubs basically uh, with screen headlights. Uh, and then they stop about here and there's nothing down. I, don't, I think these might be in place, but I think they're out. None of this is here any longer. And as was mentioned, all this is gone and there is a, a six foot vinyl opaque fence on the, uh, the town property adjoining uh, the site. Um, so I think uh, with the expanded um, pallet shed, uh, putting the arborvitaes here to kind of soften that up as per the 2018 plan makes sense. I'm glad this concurrence from, uh, from the applicant's engineer. And then I think going ahead and planting just as was shown on the 2018 plan back in this area here. I mean, there are some um, things you got to work around with a riprap and there's a catch basin, there's a drainage swale. But I think this was designed with those features in mind. You can see them right in the plan. So um, hopefully those can be installed without any problem. Um, and then um, I left it up to the applicant proposed conditions. Either you could take all this landscaping and um, identify it and show it on a revised landscaping plan. And I could approve that as staff if the commission chooses as a condition of the approval I'm proposing. Um, or you could go back and swap some of these out for the approved elements in the 2018 plan, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but um, I just wanted to provide that option. So um, that's landscaping. Uh, the lighting also was different than what was on the last approved plan, which made sense because I think it was either metal halide or high pressure sodium. So it's all been swapped out for LEDs. They appear to be full cutoff. So I am just um, suggesting that or requesting that information on the fixtures be provided in a revised photometric plan so we can just verify everything's fine. Um, I did do a little more digging on the sidewalk and I'll just put this up here. Um, and this is the 2013 approval um, for the use. And that's when they really reworked the parking area and the building. I think they're actually at that time proposing a much larger building that they never went through with. But uh, to the point about the sidewalks, there is um, a condition here, which says prior to the issuance of zoning permit, submit a revised site plan showing a graded shelf a future sidewalk construction when connectivity is warranted along the south side of East Main Street. So since this is a modification application to this prior approval, it looks like the commission already dealt with, if you will, the issue of the sidewalks, the sidewalk requirement and came up with this, um, which I kind of makes sense based on the discussion previously. Um, I don't know, I would, you know, this is a prior condition of approval, so I'm proposing something like, you know, all prior con approval conditions need to be complied with this may still apply. So that would bring this into play and it would put, um, you know, the, the plan would need to be demonstrated to include this shelf, basically it graded out for installation of future sidewalk when it makes sense. So maybe that's one way to split the baby and also defer to the commission's previous uh, decision on it, if you will, and that, um, it's basically something already decided by the commission in 2013. So that's one way to look at it. Um, and the only other item I'll have is, um, on, let's see, I guess this one.
on a, going out there this week in a site visit, I noticed there's a, a couple of boats and a truck and some pallets, some debris all over here. Uh, there's some back here as well, no vehicles, but there's more debris or materials. I think having that Arborvitae screen here would probably, you know, screen that enough. There's no specific requirement in the regulations to that I could see about outside storage uh, related to an industrial use like this. And there is an existing gravel area. It's been something that's been done there historically. Could it be cleaned up? Sure. But I think if you do the screening here, that really, um, you know, removes it from um, easy view from adjoining properties. And then you have the fence on the other side here. Um, so I'll leave that to the commission to uh, think about um, and show you my proposed conditions quickly. Um, again, I left an option here for uh, whether you want additional landscaping along the rear south property line along that vinyl fence adjoining the animal shelter. Um, if you don't think it's necessary, um, I would suggest you make a uh, finding that um, um, you're basically uh, modifying the landscaping requirements per uh, section 63L2, finding that this excellence of landscaping design and that the uh, rear yard landscaping requirements are not needed. They don't need to be met. So it'd be one way to go. Um, proposing a few conditions here prior to a zoning permit that there would be a demonstration that the existing fixtures on the building all meet um, this standard we've been proposing for other um, developments comply with what's in the regulations. I did take out the 3000 Kelvin uh, thing we usually put in since frankly, it's not chiseled in the regulations and these fixtures may not comply in their existing. So um, um, B would deal with uh, revisions to the last approved landscaping plan, um, would allow the submittal of, of uh, all the required information, the existing trees and plantings between the building, the parking lot, Route 1 East Main Street for review and approval by a uh, town planner, um, or at the applicant's discretion, you could keep some of all of these plantings. Um, Now, I also try to, um, let me go back here. Okay, so I did revise this and try to um, do what Evan is so adept at doing. Uh, so I should really show you these findings. This is the revised staff report I just typed up and saved. I don't seem to be moving very much though. So I suggested a couple of wording changes here. So everything in yellow is suggested wording. The red now is just my little notes to the commission. So I'm saying that um, all the existing plantings along the Western property line, along the driveway to the animal shelter, there's those few areas that already have, um, let me flip back here if I could do that. Oh, actually, I didn't, never mind. I, I'll. I'll flip back to that and notice it didn't come up in the share screen. So okay. So they could keep the plants that are already there basically, and then where the gaps are, they would fill them in with the plantings from the 2018 plan. So I'm gonna change my share here so you can see my revised staff memo. Okay, can everyone see the yellow and the red? Yes? No? I heard, yes. heard sorry, head nod, okay. Um, yeah, yes, we can. All right, the idea behind this revised B would be to allow what's in place between the building, the parking lot, and East Main Street to be identified and um, approved by staff basically as a modification to the prior landscaping plan also along the western property line but only those plants that are already in place where there are the gaps along the western property line with that driveway of the animal shelter those would have to be filled in with the plants as per the 2018 plan which are the taller arborvitaes um 
So that's this yellow here, the missing plannings along the Western property line should be placed in accordance with the approved landscaping plan, which is defined as that last plan revised in 2018. So C here would be the provision if you do want landscaping along the white vinyl fence abutting the animal shelter, you could use this language here and the applicant would have to uh, propose additional landscaping along that area. And then D was for the sidewalk. Um, and you could take that out or not, depending on how you want to decide it. And then before CO, I have uh, just the sort of standard requirements already in the regulations about bonding any uncompleted work, it's the middle of as built. And I just put this in here as a placeholder, frankly, the uh, and based on how the site's maintained, I'm not sure this is really necessary since, uh, you know, the property owner has been a very adept at uh, replacing dead landscaping elements, unfortunately not with the same materials, but um, it's a really well-maintained site, particularly on the front. So um, that's all I have at the moment. Great. Uh, th thanks, Harry. Does the applicant have any further comments? Um, yeah, Jeremy again in Crystal Engineering. Um, yeah, no, I, I totally agree. I would be in favor for, you know, filling in, in the gaps on the Western uh, side. I would, um, we could stay away from touching that, that Southern um, line in the rear. I would appreciate that um, only because that stormwater basins back there may make it a little bit difficult for uh, landscaping. Um, and the previous plan, uh, never really had anything along that uh, that property line in the south. Um, in addition to that, um, as Harry already said, uh, the front, he keeps up, it's well-maintained. And, uh, and then, uh, yeah, the last thing would be if we can just keep that sidewalk shelf for future connection, I would, that'd be great, but that's all I have. Thank you. Okay, uh, Harry, okay, so then I think we're, it sounds like the issues are landscaping sidewalks, right? Um, yeah, and I Harry. just added this uh, D in here, the note required by the uh, section on deferral of immediate installation of parking spaces. So that, that would be a need to be added to the site plan before uh, the zoning permits issue. Okay, so, um, Okay, so looking at the recommendation, the recommendation is an approval. Uh, again, there's it's it's a manufacturing warehouse type of use that's been around. It complies with the bulk, and and what we're talking about is the uh, conditions about. I think it's sidewalk and uh, landscaping. So let's go with sidewalk first. The the I. When we addressed this, when we approved this, whenever it was in 2013, we required a shelf, but not an actual sidewalk. Is that correct, Harry? That's what the approval uh, decision letter for 2013 states, yes. Okay. And has was the shelf done? I couldn't tell from the, it could easily be graded so that you could run the sidewalk in. I think um, as staff, I would take uh, the stance that show me where you know the grading is such that you could put the sidewalk in without really regrading along the frontage and if not propose that grading uh, to comply with the 2013. Um, the alternative is actually build sidewalk so um, I think okay you, know, you have to do the grading anyway to build sidewalk so you just okay. have to do the grading and do some you know some seating maybe that's you know minimal amount of and it might be fine the way it is I just in looking at the grading plan of Jeremy maybe you could tell us right now but um, but you can verify that after approval because that condition already exists in 2013. And do you have something think, in there to say all prior conditions apply? And yeah, let me just reiterate that. I don't think I threw that in as a number three, right? Okay. Um, well, let's, while Harry's typing, what do you guys think about the sidewalk? Well, I sort of, so I sort of think that uh, I took some notes here because I'm trying to think back and this might 
might have been the applicant, and there might be one or two more besides us. But we did had a couple times say that uh, we didn't. Uh, and we kept the, the sidewalk in limbo, so to speak. We it wasn't required to do it at the time, but they were not told. But they were told that there's a possibility in the future. I thought I thought we did something like that, but to one or two applicants and, <clears throat> and deferred it to uh, a, a later situation if needed. I mean, um, I think this might have been one of the applicants, if I remember correctly. It's been a while, so and I'm not sure. But I thought we we did do something. I wanted two people uh, applicants about uh, deferring this the sidewalk until uh, it was thought that it was really needed. Um, yeah, and I I, I, do, I recall that too, Joe. But I I know we can't have an open ended. I mean, in other words, I thought we actually I, you, you have to say a date. You can't just say yeah, you know. I know. And I and they have know. to complete the work within five years. You know, so that's you know it's sort of yeah. Been a while, so yeah, uh, and then it, then it gets forgotten, right? And and in this case, we actually did impose a condition. I mean, my my sense, had we not imposed a condition, I'd say you got to do it because, and and I would okay. distinguish. Remember, the reason we said we didn't do it in Stony Creek is because it wasn't a major roadway. This is Route One, which is a major roadway, and yeah. it is it does have major vehicle vehicular or pedestrian traffic. It doesn't have pedestrian, I don't think, and that's the reason why you probably wouldn't do it, but. It does have major vehicular traffic, so that that that's why I'd say, okay, it's uh, you should do it. That said, it is out at the edge. <laughs> there there isn't a lot of vehicular, there isn't a lot of pedestrian stuff. I don't know if buses go out there, and you know, and and we and we didn't require it earlier. And and the theory is this is simply a modification. It's not like it's a brand new site. It's simply a tweak of what we previously approved. So, um, so, uh, any other thoughts, Joe? No, not right now. No, okay. I want to listen to what everybody else has to say. Sure. Massimo. Yeah. Hi, uh, Massimo here. Um, yeah, I mean, right off the bat, I think, uh, even though there was a condition on back in 2013, um, you know, I think, you know, if I had to make the decision with or without a sidewalk, I would probably, I would, I would probably go with the sidewalk for today. Um, I also would like to know um, if this condition's put on um, and property owners change, would that restriction be, be passed on to a new property owner? Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, I mean... You know, I, 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 I'd, I'd hate to leave it in limbo. I'd like to make a decision on it, and I would like for maybe, maybe there, there can be a bus stop um, in that area. <laughs> um, you know, so uh, I would say, you know, I, I would go for the sidewalk if, if, uh, if I was to have to choose at the moment. Sure. Okay. Thanks, Massimo. Sharon, thoughts? Yeah, yeah. Sharon Hutner here. I, I would also agree that I think. Uh, sidewalk is appropriate here. Um, I'm not quite sure exactly where this property is. Is it um, right next to the transfer station? Yeah, it's just on the Guilford side of the driveway to the transfer station. And there's a little okay, side so driveway that goes along the property line back to the animal shelter. Okay, because there's there's a little food store across from yep, the- it's right uh, across the- Route okay, one, yeah. from the uh, from there. So you know, a sidewalk would help that. You know, if people are working in the transfer station or workers in the building, if they want to go for lunch or something like that. And I'm wondering if there is a bus stop um, along that route anywhere near there. That would make another case for adding a sidewalk. Um. Okay, thanks. Thanks, Sharon. I, 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 I am probably leaning towards the sidewalk as well, simply because we're, we're, we're never gonna, the, the only way we would ever, I, I, I guess under, if we kept the existing condition, I guess it's, it would be ready to be installed, but what would it depend on? Would it depend on the neighboring property install? I, you know, it, it, it's um, not like we could even require it, could we? No, I mean, the way I read the condition, well, a way to read it would be that it just says um, um, 
for future sidewalk construction when connectivity is warranted along the south side of East Main Street. It doesn't say who's responsible for installing the actual sidewalk. It could be yeah. left to town slash state. Right. Usually the town. I mean, I think the town is doing something along West Main Street several spots now. Yeah. Uh, filling in some gaps. Um, so I don't I think there's no a way to read this is that there's no future obligation once the that graded shelf is created, the applicant's done. Right. And then if the town wanted to do it, it could, I, I suppose. Right, right. Yeah. At some point when there's the budding adjacent, you know, sidewalks. Yeah. Or a bus stop or whatever. Yeah. I, or do we, I mean, I, look, sidewalks around Route 1, even though it goes way out there and it's not big pedestrian, I think that's that's been one of our goals, right? Yeah. Doesn't it? Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. It's a priority. Yeah. I mean, it is a low priority area along Route One of right. the areas along Route One on that plan and that map. So, right, I'll say that. But what does the what does the map show? I mean, do we... yeah, I could share that. Um, Would you be able to give me an idea what the, what the length of that sidewalk is? How much frontage do do they have? Uh, Jeremy, can you answer that? Uh, let me see one second here. Uh, okay, so you should be able to hopefully see the colored map now. It's a, so is it a what, a priority three? It's a priority three. I'll, I'll blow it up a little bit. Um, Okay. So that's Sycamore, and I believe the transfer station is somewhere along this stretch. Um, so I, I guess that's an argument that it's not high. <laughs> well, um, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, then you're along down to the section uh, just that we were talking about with the other application, which the high traffic areas. Right major arterial routes and so forth. Hmm. Yeah, excluding the driveway, it'd be roughly about 200 uh, feet. Thank you. I, I kind of like it, but I understand it's our plan says it's not it's priority three. Uh, Joe, any thoughts? <laughs> I'm in limbo like you. I I, I don't know what, which way to swing here. You yeah. Know, I've, uh, I don't. I mean, is it? Would it be? Not knowing what the the, the topography is, it, would it be difficult to put it in, or do they have to bring in fill to get it level? Is there is there a shelf there already, or is it? A, a, a cliff or a rock or, or something they got to it, it's I think it's reasonably a... yeah Harrison Town Flair I think it's reasonably sort of rolls down to the level of the uh, pavement on Route One I believe it's not that much of a drop though you're talking about grade changes what two three four feet or something tops in other words they got it, they got a grade it cut into it to grade not fill in in other words. Um, it, it rolls a little bit, but it's fairly flat. It's not super flat, like a pancake, but it's not a lot of topography there that I recall. Uh, I can bring up a Google image or something. Um, I hate to see uh, see the applicant have to spend a, a really expensive amount of money uh, to uh, because of the topography is so difficult. On a, on a on a priority three situation. Yeah, I mean that's another way to look at it. Is this is a modification application, and even with other um, situations where um, there's deviation from the requirements of the regulations, you sort of did some kind of uh, almost like a balancing act of well, how much change is there really on the site, and trying to relate what you're asking the applicant to do to how much they're changing the property uh, because they did get approval for this and, and there was no 
you know, requirement. So that's another way to look at it is in proportion to, if they were doubling the building size and adding more parking and do this and do that with more intensive site plan changes, then you, know, you could say, well, you're putting all that into it. You're making all those changes. You should bring it, you know, into conformance. Um, they were doing an expenditure to, to do all this modification. A sidewalk wouldn't have been that much more. Right, but this is just the building. It's a building addition, and uh, you know the pallet shed, and and adding the landscaping that you know to die over time. Some of it that's in some engineering work to, or landscape architecture work to ID the plants. There's not much else, and the metric plants. It's just some cleanup, and they're doing a twenty by fifty addition to the building, and a twenty by fifty pallet shed. Those are the actual site plan changes to the property. The other side, the other side is the other situation. That shelf should have been there already. And it may be, yeah. I just can't really, I, you know, pull it off the grading plan as jumping out at me. So, um. yeah. I mean, the the theory is so, Joe. If the shelf's there already, then it can't be that expensive to put. I don't know. Maybe it is expensive to to put in a sidewalk. I I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well. Uh, well, um, like you said, Tom was putting them. They're putting them in, I think, on Maple Street. I've been seeing them right from the, where the package store is, yeah. Cilio, just all the way down. That's where they're putting sidewalks all the way. Seems like yeah. towards. Uh, yeah, that's I great. Believe they're doing something on Jefferson at the bottom, and I think they're filling in some gaps along uh, West Main Street, also. Yeah, that's oh. great. Well, Maple yeah, I saw the one in Maple Street too. Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, you know, I was on it <laughs> very recently. So I guess what are we going to do? <laughs> it's, uh, do we want the the confirm the shelf is in? That's the minimum, uh, or require the sidewalk be installed? Uh, I know. Um, I don't know. I've been going back and forth. If, if it, I, I wish it wasn't priority three. <laughs> Harry, can I? Here, Jim Freddy, uh, Jim Jim Freddy, Freddy I, don't mean, what you, I don't mean to jump in, but can I show? Go a ahead, jump in. Can I show sure. a photograph? Sure. Sure. This is the front of that, and the the state right of way line kind of runs like right along here. So it looks like they did because they did a pretty extensive utility replacement all through here. Okay. Uh, a number of years ago, and it looks like they did flatten this out here already, um, based on what the grades used to be. Uh, I mean, for what it's worth, I, we didn't reshoot it, so I can't say for sure. But it looks like about no, if you have an old, yeah, if you have an old plan, you can just bring it in and show me versus the new plan that you you know it's all yeah. flattened out and just visually it looks like. I mean, you tell me you can run a sidewalk through there if you had to somehow, but you know, you like you said, there's utility. You know, how do you really do that? Those are boxes to get under. Yeah, they can be adjusted pit. though. Okay. But, um, but, you know, like I said, the property line, I think, kind of runs right through here. So if we kept it right, you know, right behind the property line, then it could be really in that flat area. But, yeah. But I just, I was looking through pictures when you all were talking. I just thought I'd share. Oh, thank you. I really wanted Jeremy to ask for the waiver because I didn't want to ask for it. <laughs> <laughs> you can blame Jeremy, right? <laughs> I would have never asked. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Um, so what do we do, guys? Um, I, I don't um, know. I think if the shelf is reasonably there and it doesn't, it's not going to be too difficult to put the sidewalk in. Maybe we got to start somewhere. Maybe that sidewalk should be put in. Okay. Uh, I'm not 100% uh, uh, thinking that's the way I should go, but. I'm on the fence both ways, but we got to start somewhere. Like Massimo said, too, you know, you got to right. start somewhere. Okay. Why don't we give them a break on the South landscaping then? Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hey. And make them build a sidewalk, <laughs> the, the landscaping to the South. That was the other thing that Jeremy mentioned that could we get away because it's. Yeah. Yeah. I, um... State didn't do something to the utilities there that makes it. Makes make it very difficult to put that sidewalk in, or more expensive. Yeah. State did something there with utilities. If you, if I understand it right, what you just said. You 
say something about utilities being there? Uh, did Mr. Preddy say something about utilities being there? I, no, I, I didn't hear him say that. I, I didn't say that, hear him say that. He, I, I thought he said they could be moved. Yeah, the the um the the services to the building got replaced a couple of years ago, and in um and that's when that the that nice lawn kind of got fixed. But um, what you were seeing in this photograph was you know covers for things, and I think the covers can be adjusted. So uh, that's not that's not make it or break it. I don't I don't believe. Uh, I misunderstood. I'm sorry. Okay, so Joe, you're kind of on the you got to start somewhere. I'm um, leaning towards. To get okay. it done. Okay. Uh, Massimo or Sharon, any other thoughts? Yeah. Um, I would rather give them a break on the sidewalk and not the landscaping. That's There's a lot of trucks that go in and out there, and there's a lot of greenhouse gases that are emitted right along that um, space. I would love to see them put some kind of landscaping on that southern border and just leave the potential for a sidewalk. Um, on the property. So Sharon, Sharon flips. Because <laughs> I'm the one that suggested uh, give them a break on the southern landscaping stuff. But but what's the reason? Uh, yeah, and I. Uh, well, anyway, may, maybe we should. Uh, Maso, any thoughts? Maybe we can do them both. I mean, you know, it's not. We could. You know, I I I'd, I'd hate to deter the project of growth. For, for the property owners here. Um, you know, as the conversation went on um, and it's a low priority um, and it looks like um, that was probably shelved already because it looked pretty flat. Um, and, and I don't even know if it's, if, if it's the owner's responsibility to put that sidewalk there. Um, I, I thought it was up for, the, you know, we weren't sure if it was the town's responsibility or the state's responsibility did did we we, we uh, it all the time <laughs> yeah, as part of a site plan approval that you put in sidewalks so on um, the one we, we've done in the past but we don't have to it's uh, you know but that doesn't mean the town can't do it too i mean we we can do it as well um yeah i'd rather see uh, i mean I, i'm gonna stick with going with the sidewalk and giving them a break on the south side with the landscaping Okay. Well, what what's the issue with the landscaping? And I, uh, other than sharing your your gen, that landscaping, we we want to increase landscaping for all environmental and every other reasons. Is uh, what what's the reason I guess for not doing the landscaping here on the south side? Is it because it's a, a mess? It's because there's a fence? It's because what? what? Uh, I'll, I'll take a stab. This Harrison Town Planner, maybe uh, uh, Jeremy or Jim could jump in. Um, there was some existing vegetation in that area. Uh, so back in 2013, it was, that was, I guess, taken as, well, that's sufficient. And when um, the animal shelter was reconstructed um, and they put that fence in, I think they took out a lot of the vegetation um, and some of this might have died. Uh, there was a note on the 2013 plan, remove dead trees from the area. So it, it, I don't know what condition it was in in 2013. And then there was a drainage swale that put in its place. So I think, you know, between all those factors, it looked like what was there disappeared or died. And um, you've got the fence. So the commission does have the ability from the screening, not the environmental viewpoint, from the screening viewpoint, the fence provides a screening. It's not on this property. It's on an adjacent property. Um, so there is that. But I think typically the commission hasn't required double fencing and there is a you know, a screen uh, for the adjoining town property from seeing into the site, basically. So I don't know if uh, the applicants want to augment that or whatever. Uh, does uh, Jeremy or Mr. Freddy, any further thoughts? Um, Jim would know more about the 2013 uh, stuff, but yeah, my, my standpoint was uh, kind of just using the vinyl fence more as a screen. Um, the drainage whales back there already, so it makes it a little bit more difficult to plant. Um, that 2017 or 2018 version kind of just left whatever was existing there, um, and we 
like to just leave whatever's existing currently. So that's just my view on it. But I don't know if uh, Jim has anything else to add. Yeah, uh, uh, Jim Preddy, H Harry hit it on the head. There was existing vegetation there. And then when when the animal shelter project happened, the, the fence that was there was actually well into the animal shelter property. And they cleared up to the property line and put the fence in. So that got rid of most of that vegetation that was there. And, and on our side of the fence, there is a, 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 a drainage swale there that basically um, mitigates the water running toward the animal shelter parking lot. So we, we do need to keep the woody vegetation out of that, basically. I mean, there is, there is you know, some scrub that's in there, and that's fine. It helps clean the runoff, but uh, we can't really let the trees grow up in there because it'll, it'll change how the detention functions. Um, Sharon Hutner, um, I'm, I don't know specifics, but um, there may be some vegetation that you can plant there that would help with the drainage. Um, yeah, I mean, possibly if we keep them out of the low areas there, um, we, uh, we just don't want to lose the volume is the issue. Well, if you, hey, Harry, are you saying something? Yeah, I, I'll hang on a second. I'm trying to go to what I was proposing here, see if the words can be sort of tweaked to reflect the last comment. Um, okay. So I had this possible condition which said the plan should be amended to include additional landscape in the area along the southern portion of the site um, and the adjoining town property located south of it as required by section 63G1. Um, we could define the additional landscaping to be uh, uh, low grasses and shrubs that don't interfere with the function of the drainage swale or something like that. Would that be a sort of a, you know, a little more minimal amount of planting? Um, just trying to hit a compromise somewhere in here. Yeah, <laughs> well, that sounds good to me. Uh, yeah, I think we could work that out, Harry, because I think that the that there's some there's some I'll say high ground between the you know the where the soil stops and the fence starts. So we should be, yeah. at least along the fence we should be able to plant something. Okay, I mean you know I can uh, gu guide uh, staff's uh, you know um, decision on compliance with the condition to all the discussion that just occurred too. So it can really. And we can put some more words in here too, if you like, just to make it a little clearer. And I'll put this back on my, I think, can you see this, the yellow and the red one? Is that what's yes. being? Yes. That's what's up there? Okay. All okay. right, so maybe I'll just type something in right now, additional landscaping in parentheses. Um, 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 <laughs> uh, that area tends to be a change of use now. Now it's becoming a swale for, to carry some water, so that's that. So what was done in 2013 is not the same as what's being done there now. So no, now the swale was always there. Huh? The swale was there before, Joe. Oh, it was. Yeah. There was just some taller vegetation that was turns out mostly on the the animal shelter side, and it got cut down. You got some higher ground, then, like you just said, put some low growing shrubs, a few like that, and clean it up a little bit. That minimal plantings just to keep it looking clean and, and still maintain a, that swale that you're looking for. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Harry's adding that language here. Yeah. Sharon Hutner again. Yeah. Um, if you're adding language, um, could you add na native? <laughs> yes, I could do well, that. we're adding language. <laughs> that word native, I guess. Okay, then. So we add that. We're going to have some minimal additional vegetation to the south. And is the consensus 
to include the sidewalk, which is right now on subsection E. Um, and I think they, it sounded like we were leaning towards yes. I'll stay, I'll stay with yes. Joe, by yourself. Okay. Um, yeah, says yes. Okay. Massimo? Massimo says yes. Okay. I'll say yes, too. Okay, guys. <laughs> um, so. How about the financial guarantee? You want to scrub that, maybe? Yeah, scrub that. Okay. Um, so, okay. I think the changes are basically in yellow, and I got rid of the finding because that was only for if you were not going to do the landscaping in the rear. And so you got all the modified conditions are here before zoning permit, document the lights are compliant, um, put on a revised landscaping plan, uh, all the new change plantings that exist along the Western property line, ones that exist and everything from the building parking lot towards in the frontage along Route 1. Um, and then where there's missing plants along the Western property line, those would be the arborvitaes from the 2018 plan. And then you have C, which we just talked about, the note required for the deferral of immediate installation of the parking, and then the sidewalk. Do you need to make a sentence, the note required by section five shall be added to the plan, add the words? Um, I think I've got it in the preamble, but let's see, what does it say? No, I don't, I should. Okay. Modified site plan. Okay. Okay. I need word the here and put Okay. We catch um, everything? I think, we did. I think so. Okay. Good. Okay. Does someone want to make a motion to approve this site plan modification uh, and to uh, impose as conditions the conditions in the staff recommendation that Harry just reviewed with us and are currently displayed on the screen, uh, including all the amendments we just made? Oh, Motion made by Joe, second by Massimo. Any further discussion? All in favor, Joe Bayuso. No in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. Sharon. Sharon Hutner is in favor. And chair's also in favor. So, okay. So uh, applications approved. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Um, okay, so that's, that's, we're on old business. That was item three of old business. Uh, item number four, also that's a public hearing coming up and uh, also public hearings five. Now for numbers, we remember the first item of the public hearing 32 Wood Road, that's a matter that we moved to old business. That was the matter we closed the public hearing we heard a long public hearing last time. Remember there was a lot of detail, there was concerns from the neighbors. Uh, I think there was a, an attorney and a, an engineer and it's been a lot of time reviewing the plans agreed to some of the conditions and modifications. Evan, can you pull up your staff report? And I think Evan tweaked the staff report following that. And that's one reason we closed the public hearing, but we didn't vote on it. So Evan, can you pull that one up? Yes. Um, I circulated some conditions to you guys this morning. Um, I did add a third finding uh, that no blasting is proposed or authorized as part of this application. Um, I'll start with the condition for consistency with the Coastal Area Management Act. Uh, that's something we put on all of our coastal site plans. Um, second finding was uh, for the proposed outdoor shower with drain uh, shall solely consist of pavers, patios flush with the proposed grade and a fence under six feet in height within the setback or shall be removed from the site plan. Uh, just to remind everybody, um, they are proposing this outdoor shower on the south side of the house. That's what that condition is related to. Um, onto the conditions. Uh, number one, prior to the start of construction, the demolition of the existing single family home 
the issuance of a zoning permit or a building permit, the following shall be completed to the satisfaction of the zoning enforcement officer. A, the applicant shall install tree protection measures consistent with section 6.3C for all trees within 40 feet of any construction activity. B, erosion control measures shall be installed and maintained throughout construction. And as may be directed by the CEO, necessary measures to control any dust generated by fill brought into the site or movement of earth material on the site shall be implemented. Our uh, second condition is that any lighting has to be consistent with the criteria from section 6.7. Uh, condition three is that prior to the issuance of a certificate of occupancy, the following shall be completed to the satisfaction of the town planner or his designee. Uh, the applicant shall install a vegetated buffer in the areas marked as existing lawn area to be vegetated with appropriate and salt tolerant plant species consistent with deep guidelines. This buffer shall consist of plantings that are salt tolerant native species suited to the coastal resource buffer environment. Uh, again, I'll throw that plan up. That was uh, some can, some uh, revisions to the plan. Uh, this light green area, as well as this one, um, there's some existing vegetation there now, but they did add these areas uh, after getting some comments from the neighbors. Um, back to our third condition, uh, the applicant shall plant three replacement trees of the same species of the three significant trees proposed to be removed. And finally, no construction vehicles or equipment shall be parked, placed, or stored for any amount of time off of the property at 32 Wood Road. Thanks. Thanks, Evan. Questions or comments from anyone? If not, then if someone will make a, uh, a motion to approve this application uh, by adopting the proposed findings and conditions that Evan has just reviewed with us. Were we Masso. all here? Yeah. Masso makes that motion to approve. Okay. Masso, motion made by Masmo. Is there a second? No seconds. Thank my Joe. Further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Bayuso? No, agree. Uh, approves. Masmo? Masmo approves. Sharon? Sharon Hutner approves. Chair also approves. So applications approved. Okay, um, that brings us then to what? Uh, new business. New business, we have an item, uh, item number one, we need to schedule public hearing for. And then I guess the biggest ones are items number two, three, four, and five. That's the, the uh, Regal Cinema, the reapplication. Um, and I expect we'll schedule that for public hearing at our next meeting in July 18th. Is that correct, uh, Harry? Uh, Harry Smith, Town Planner. Um, all these applications were technically received tonight. So, uh, by law, the commission has a, a maximum of 65 days to schedule public hearing. Um, so the next regular meeting is the 18th, unless the commission adds a meeting uh, between the 18th and the first meeting of September. You want to make um, the 65 days would elapse before you get to the meeting, first meeting in September. So, uh, we're planning on scheduling all these for. Um, uh july 18th uh, okay unless you tell us otherwise okay no i think we should we should go ahead and we i guess the question the on the regal we got a peer review for the first one and yeah. there were some i mean there's some significant changes i guess so the, a lot more residential and a different building and whatever so should we get a peer review for this one? Um, I did discuss it with the town engineer, and I have an email from him I can put up. He is recommending that you do um, uh, undertake peer review, but let me just put that up the screen for everyone. So you should be able to see email from John Hefferly to myself uh, and Evan um, dated today at uh, quarter 1 p.m. Um, receive the newest proposal, recommend a peer review, trap something similar to that previous course of development. Q times are right in Route 139, parking and trail circulation remain some of my concerns. Love of effort, a peer review for this surprise development plan should be less intense than original. I will bring forward additional review comments at a future date. I can put the plan up, but I kind of hesitate to do that unless you really want to see it. But essentially, no. I will tell you it's more units than what the other proposal that deletes the uh, proposed Starbucks and um, Make some other changes, but uh, 
Okay. Yeah, I think we should just authorize. I I don't want it, us to delay. I think if we get we authorize the peer review, that you know, we it'll move. It won't be an unnecessary delay if we get that done now. So, do we all agree on that that we should do the peer review as recommended by the town engineer? Yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah. Yeah, oh, Joe. Engineer. Yeah. Yes, I do. I do agree. Okay, Massimo, you're good with that. Yes, I am. Massimo. Okay. Good. Okay, I think there's a consensus then that we all think we should go with that. So, you okay. Can do that. Great. Great. Thank you. Okay, then uh, moving on to other business. Um, first item is a request for extension for the completion date for the an approved uh, special exception for uh, the Buckley Road Monoese application that we approved and went to court. Uh, Harry Smith Town Planner uh, received uh, communication from uh, Amy Suchins, who's the attorney for um, the developers and the applicant uh, for this previously approved project. Um, they um, are requesting extension of date by which the grading work under the section 6.8 approval uh, would need to be completed. And basing that on the fact that the application, the approval was appealed to Superior Court and um, the case was entered into judgment on October 17th. And I think they, what I get out of this is saying that the uh, time period for um, executing the project was told uh, or suspended during the time frame of the court case because the applicant did not want to act and the, their approval pending in court. Um, so, and then it started again uh, once the uh, judgment was entered. Am I correct, Chuck, in saying that? Yeah, that's generally correct, that there's a stay during that time. So, I, I mean, it's, it makes sense. Okay. So, you can simply, um, it's on the agenda. You can take an action in approving this if you so cho chose. Um, yeah, uh, I, I think so. Is is that okay? Does someone uh, want to make a motion to approve the request for the extension of the completion date for the special exception uh, as requested by the applicant? So moved by Joe. Motion to uh, grant the extension by Joe. Is there a second? Massimo seconds. Second Massimo. Further discussion? All those in favor? Joe Vayuso. Joe Vayuso in favor. Massimo. Massimo's in favor. Sharon. Sharon Hutner is in favor. And Chair is also in favor. Uh, item number two, bond establishment, 245 East Main Street. Mary? Uh, Harry Smith Town Planner. Evan, do you have the uh, documentation on this? I can go get it, but it's not at my desk. Um, I do. Uh, the owner of 245 East Main Street uh, requested a bond for the installation of, of some additional lighting uh, in the amount of $4,551.78. So I'll make, uh, uh, and that's... That's good with our ZEO and uh, is uh, yes, um, this lighting is being required by uh, state of Connecticut building code and the building inspector so that uh, we can get some temporary COs for for this apartment. Okay, so we'll make a motion to approve the this bond establishment for 245 East Main Street. Sharon Hutner so moves. Motion by Sharon is our second. Massimo second. Second Massimo. Further discussion on favor, Joe Vayuso. Joe Vayuso in favor. Massimo. Massimo is in favor. Sharon. Sharon Hutner is in favor. And Chair is also in favor. Then we have a uh, planner's report, Harry. Uh, Harry Smith Town Planner. Um, I did include in the packet um, copies of uh, minutes from the two meetings that have been held by the uh, subcommittee on landscaping. Um, and since there are several members of the commission not here, uh, maybe it's better to defer to the discussion other than to ask if any of the members here have any questions. Um, I'm happy to go through it briefly uh, if you'd like me to. I will just note that I was pretty encouraged by the last meeting. We seem to handle, I think as the group, seem to handle uh, two of the biggest uh, 
um, items and kind of, at least on the first one, come to a consensus and the second one just sort of fleshed it out. And I think uh, it seemed like it was going in the right direction. Um, planning a third meeting in July 8th. Um, I am also um, going to be attending Board of Finance meeting next Monday. And I've requested to um, transfer uh, money that the department has in a uh, consulting item um, to a capital project that would include um, work by a planning consultant on the landscaping section, the regulations, as well as several other sections in the basic standards in section six, um, parking, lighting, stormwater, drainage, and some other sections that really need updating. Uh, for example, the lighting section, as you know, doesn't even address LEDs. It was written before LEDs were in widespread use. Uh, we've had a lot of also changes in stormwater drainage requirements at the engineering department and the state of uh, applying to the, the town. And we've been addressing some of these conditions on approvals, but I think it's quite a bit of work that could be done and needs to be done to bring all the standards up. So hopefully um, Board of Finance will let me do that. and. Um, I believe the RTM would have to do that as well. And then uh, and look at trying to hire a consultant to help out with all this. Um, so do you want to talk about the landscaping committee a little more? Are you sort of happy with that at the moment? Uh, what do you want me to do? I think, I mean, Marcy's on it and yeah. Uh, yeah. So why, why don't we wait, you know, cause then you end up repeating yourself. I know Shannon, yeah. you're on it too. So, so, uh, uh yeah well I, I, I we can defer i mean you give us an overview and we have minutes and yeah. uh so you know maybe, maybe we can cover it when others are here so okay um the only other thing i've got is um maybe taking the temperature of the commission about an additional meeting beyond the 18th particularly with respect to the regal uh cinema resubmission um you know, it is up to the applicant to allow the commission to continue the public hearing if that's necessary beyond the 18th to September, uh, because you only have 35 days to continue it, which would not get you to September. Um, so uh, you begin to talk about that on the 18th, or maybe if you want to keep the Thursdays, um, we have the 25th, which is the next Thursday. Um, I believe, um, Evan, you're going to be gone on the 1st of August, right? Yes. Um, and then the next day might be August 8th, uh, which would at least give the applicant some time to address anything that might come up on the 18th of July. Um, so any thoughts about that or you want to take this up later too? Or what, what do you think? Um, my sense is uh, it's if the, if the special meeting, I, I assume it's it's by Regal and there's nothing else that's big as far as we know. Um, right. There's nothing else in. Um, I expect to receive an application for um, a site plan modification for the police station on uh, Laurel Street. Um, they're reworking the parking lot and putting some security uh, gates and so forth into the, uh, the facility. Um, that isn't in the door yet, but I know they're trying to get that moving. That could be taken up on the 18th and it might be, that might be it. You might not need to extend it. So I believe that will be in early enough to get on the 18th agenda. Yeah. My, my sense, particularly since we're, a lot of people aren't here, uh, you know, a lot of regular, yep. uh, yeah. <laughs> three regular members aren't here that we, we can talk about whether we want to have a special meeting in August, I guess, probably. Uh, okay. Probably, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it and see where things are on the 18th. So we will have an opportunity then. All right. Do you want me to just survey, um, see if folks can make the 8th just to have it, you know, as a back? Sure. So yeah. at least we know on the 18th, we'll know, um, you know, let's say somebody might not be available, at least we've consulted them and we know they could possibly make it or not. Right. August 8th, is that with a... Uh, that, yeah, the state of Thursdays, that would, that would be the right. day, the next okay. event the Thursday. Okay, okay, I'll do that then. That makes sense. Uh, that sound good with everyone? Any, well, any wait a minute. Problem? Somebody Joe? saying, oh. Uh, Joe, I, I just want to say, <clears throat> unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to, as of now, I'm not going to be able to make the 18th meeting. Oh, uh, okay. I, 
I thought, without looking at the schedule, I thought it was, we were going to push the fourth one week later, and I thought it was going to be the, like the 11th and the 25th, and then it oh. never happened. So I won't be able to make the 18th, but I'll definitely can make the, the the 8th of August. It's not a problem. Okay. As, uh, okay. Something might change on the 18th, but right now I, I'm not available. Okay. All right. Evan, is there anything else you've got? Nope. So I guess that's it in plans report. Okay. Any any anyone else have anything else? If not, okay. then <laughs> someone will make a motion to adjourn. Sharon Hutner makes a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn made by Sharon. Is there a second? No seconds. Second by Joe. Any further discussion? All in favor. Joe? No in favor. Massimo? Massimo's in favor. Sharon? Sharon's in favor. Sharon's also in favor. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank everyone. you all. Yeah. Yeah. This program was brought to you in part through the support of the Town of Brantford. Watch town meetings and other videos on demand at BrantfordTV.org.